What's up, guys? It's yo boy Omnisense back with Reborn and Naruto as Abito Ichiha. Part 4. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Minato continued, Abito is by far the most trickiest ninja I have ever seen, not unforeseen, as he'd been training with Kagami and Kishina prior to me coming along. So he could deal with multiple low-level jonins if he wanted, fooling them into tricks, and his bat clones are quite hard to handle, unlike like regular ones. But usually goes for a more laid-back approach. The only other flaw is his lack of chakra reserves, he is quite behind on this one, but makes up for it with his unusual fast recovery. Here is in chuckled again. That boy improved quite a lot he said, before rubbing his chin. Hiruzen looked at Minato for reactions while he said, that's why I think Kibito and Kakashi would be a great addition to the Anbu. Even though we don't take Genins in Anbu, but for the Achiha, I could make an exception. And right on point Minato flinched. Being an Anbu was no joke, for one to be one, he needed to have something that backed up his skills. It should be this way, as they directly served under the Hokage. Even the lowest Anbu member in strength was a high Chunin, and an average Anbu was considered around Jonin level. While an Anbu captain was regarded as high Jonin level, or even in special cases like Sakumo's or Kagami's Anbu team was considered cage level. And as a former Anbu himself, Minato knew how much stress it could put on you. Okage-sama, I might be stepping out of line when I say this, but I think Ibido and Kakashi are too young to join the Anbu sure they might be trained by elite cage level shinobis from a young age, but mentally they still need to grow. Ibido is sharp as an Anbu when it comes to picking up things, and Kakashi can be quite ruthless when it comes to his sword Minato continued. But I think the boys should grow a bit more before they join the shadows. Sometimes the darkness can change people. They are both too young for this in my opinion. Here is an internally smiled, while externally just nodded acting disappointed and all. Kagami gave something similar about Ibido. And Sakumo did the same about Kakashi. Both were hesitant in letting them join the Anbu. So Minato caught the boy's advantages right on. And it was a good thing it was this way. It was just that his so-called advisors like Danzo and Kaharu were pushing him to sign them up to Anbu. But now that a capable shinobi like Minato also shared the same concern, it would be wrong to send them into the shadows. But that didn't mean, he would just let their talent sit by. And he knew just the thing. Hiruzen leaned forward on his table. Minato, how about you nominate your team for the next Chunin exams? He asked. I know Kakashi is already a Chunin, but Rin and Ibido isn't Minato blinked hearing that. But isn't the next Chunin exam going to be held at Kumo? Hiruzen shook his head. You know how Kumo is with their territory. They want to avoid any foreign shinobis stepping on their homeland. So they backed out again. So this Chunin exam will be held in Kanoha. Hiruzen's eyes shined, and I think it would be a great time to show off some of your talented shinobi. It will convince the daimyo to increase the military funds and all that. But most importantly, it will send a very good message to other villages that our hidden leaf doesn't have any short of talented shinobis. It might just even buy of other daimyos of other nations before the next war starts, we need all the funds we can get. Minato awkwardly nodded. By rank, he was just another jonin. But the Hokage was casually sharing so much valuable political information with him, meant that the Saratobi trusted him. Hiruzen also uses these types of situations to teach a thing or two to Minato. The Saratobi had chosen the Yellow Flash as his successor. And it was a good way to teach him about international politics, they don't call him the professor for nothing. But wouldn't putting Abito in the spotlight like that put him in danger, Minato said. As his teacher, Minato was a bit worried about the Achiha. Here is inside, yes, that it would. But if you are as sharp as I hope you are you should have noticed that the cracks between the village and the Achiha are almost gone now. Well, Abido is the main reason for that the Achiha wears their pride on their sleeves, and for them, Abido is that pride. 
a Sharingan user by the age of five, getting taught personally by Kagami and an Uzumaki princess. With his exceptional skills as a medical ninjutsu expert, they have great expectations for him. The Hokage paused, dragging his pipe. And of course Chunin exams are show-offs amongst the village anyway, so putting Abito Ichiha there to show off would be a great way to boost the reputation of the Ichiha. Minato seemed a bit speechless that the Hokage was using a kid as a bargaining chip to mend the bridge between the village and the Ichiha. But it also showed that as the Hokage you sometimes had to put on difficult decisions. The Namek has also realized how complicated the job of a cage is. He has to look at all perspectives before taking even the smallest action. But as his sensei, it's mostly your call if you want to put him on the Chunin exams with Rin. Minato thought for a moment. He was worried about Ibido, but also knew the boy's capabilities. The Ichiha was strong and focused when doing even the minor of tasks. And unless he was put against a group of Jonin, Minato was confident that the Ichiha could come out alive. And even if that happened, Minato was half sure Ibido had some secrets up his ass that he could pull down from if needed. So he agreed with the Hokage's proposal. I think both Abito and Rin is ready for it. Hiruzen smiled, clapping his hands. Great. Now before you ask me who's going to be Kakashi's substitute in the team. It's someone who is very friendly with the Ichiha boy. He said, tossing a small scroll towards the Namikas. Who grabbed it with ease and opened its content. On the other hand, Abito and his team knew nothing of what was going on in the Hokage Tower. And all of them decided to have breakfast before breaking off. And of course as a former employee of Ichiraku Raymond, Abito took his teammates there. Abito walked into the shop, Kakashi and Rin tagging behind. And just going into the shop, his nose was assaulted with a mix of spices, that aroma of hot Raymond and the feeling of nostalgia. Honestly, his training took quite a lot of time from him, so much that he had to quit after working only one year. But coming back here brought him good memories. How's it going big boss? Hearing Abito the owner of the shop turned and gave him a hearty smile. Oh, Abito it's been so long how's it been? He asked. Come sit, I hope the shinobi life is treating you well. The Ichiha shrugged. It's good and all anyway, I brought a few friends, treat them with something special. Tuchi chuckled as Rin and Kakashi took their seat. And quickly took the order. Just as Tucci was making the ramen noodles, a kid ran up to Abito, jumping on his back. Aha I got you, Big Mimi a childish voice said. Abito smiled, as he gently put Aim on his lap. Now, when did I become a Mimi? He asked, hawking the girl on her nose. When you stopped coming here a month ago. She said, pouting. Rin was overwhelmed by the small girl's cuteness and pinched her cheeks. Oh, who you are so cute. I just wanna eat you up. The small girl blushed hearing the praise from Rin, when she was beautiful herself. You are also pretty and nice. Unlike this meanie like him. And she made a face looking at the Ichiha. Really, then you don't want to play with him. Abito took out a small bat and let it fly around her. And as an energy fluffball, she was she quickly got down and started running around the shop, playing with the bat. Rin and Kakashi chuckled at the girl while she ran chasing after the bat. A.M., don't cause any trouble to the customer, Tucci said as he brought up his customer's order. Really what am I going to do with you? He shook his head, while all three of his customers dug into the fresh ramen. And after the first bite, they started wolfing it down like mad beasts. They were pretty hungry after all that running, and you could only have so much ration bars before it gets to you. And within the minute the bowl was over. That was actually pretty good. Kakashi said, I want seconds. I second that Rin agreed. Well, me too then. Abito smiled. You heard it, boss. Tucci smiled, loud and clear. With that, the Raymond owner was back to making another serving for his guests. But it was then when another customer entered the shop. Oh, Abito my youthful friend you are here. Abito blinked, before turning around in his seat. It was Mike Guy, with his Colgate white teeth shining like tinfoil. Rin, Kakashi and A.M. squinted at the light that came out of that teeth. The only one unaffected was Abido. Oh my eyes Kakashi said, half glaring, and half squinting now. Well, now you know, why I wear sunglasses all the time. Abido mumbled. And you stop smiling, you will set the sun on fire with that smile of yours. Guy laughed at the joke. Anyway, have you heard about the upcoming Chunin exams? Abido raised an eyebrow. Um no. 
Well, Yukai heard some solid news that this year's Chunin exams will be held here in our village, Guy said. Don't you think it's a youthful time we got promoted to a Chunin? Abito blinked. I kinda only been a Genin for a month, but sure why not? But I don't know how it will happen as Haddock right here is also a Chunin. But anyhow, join us. It's my treat. I smiled again, this time with less teeth, but the effects were mostly the same. Gladly, my youthful friend. So, basically the hokage, and I think you guys are ready for the Chunin exams. And in the upcoming Chunin exam next month, he wants you guys to participate. Minato Namikaze stood in front of his team, explaining the situation. The exam will be held inside the village, so you guys should be relatively safe in terms of other exams held outside. And getting a field promotion to Chunin is quite tough, that's why almost all Genin come back to take Chunin exams multiple times for it. As the Namikaze looked at his team for reactions he found what he expected. Bakashi looked bored, he was already one, so he just stayed with the team for courtesy, Abito was neutral, meaning he expected it, while Rin was a bit nervous. You guys don't need to agree right away you can even decline the offer. Minato clarified. But we have been Genins for only a month isn't it too early? She said. I mean I get it Abito is strong enough to take the exams, and Kakashi is already a Chunin, but I don't think I'm there yet. Kakashi wanted to speak about not looking down on herself, but Abito bit him to it. Rin, don't underestimate yourself. Abito said, not to brag or anything, but me and Kakashi been training since the time we unlocked our chakra, and by legendary S rank Shinobis no less the fact that you were put in our team, and you can keep up and not be a hassle to us. Speaks volumes of your accomplishment so don't sell yourself short. Kakashi gave the Achiha glare. The Ichiha is right but, you didn't have to be that hard, why cause she's a girl? Abita rolls his eyes, well sorry to say, I like my woman strong. And that made Rin frown and her expression darken, who would want to be your woman? The Ichiha shrug, let's decide that after puberty hits you all he half whispered to himself, the words not reaching the girl's ears. But a, eh, Abito is right you know, Minato said. Rin you might feel a bit insecure and there's no polite way to say it, but you sell yourself short. You are better than any regular genin, with your arsenal of water and medical jutsus you are quite there yet. You might not have any real life experience like other genins who are stuck in their ranks for years, but that's it. Personally, I think you are ready for it. But it's ultimately your decision. Rin didn't speak for a while, contemplating on her sensei's words. Abito might be blunt at times, but the boy never wanted anything bad from her. Kakashi was her friend for years, and he also agreed with Minato's and Abito's assessments. So the only thing keeping her back was her fear. Fear of not making it in time, but she wanted to be by Kakashi's and Abito's side when they were on dangerous missions. And she couldn't let her fears hold the whole team back. With resolve, she slapped both her cheeks. Get it together girl. She told herself. Before she looked the yellow flash right in the eye, I will take the exams. And when her teammate smiled back at the answer, she knew it was the right one. She would get stronger, one month was enough to grow strong, and she would put her all into it. She promised herself. But then another thing came to her mind. But sensei if Kakashi is already a Chunin. Who's gonna be our third member? Now that you mention it I have the same question in mind. Abito said raising an eyebrow. Who? Minato smiled. Well, it will be he stopped before looking over his team's shoulders. Is it time to make the perfect entry? And Abito's face darkened. Dynamic entry. A flash of green came rushing and creating a dust cloud. Friends I have returned. And I youthfully say, I will be your third member. Abito dropped his head and sighed. Well, at least the Chunin exams won't be boring. And Guy smiled to it. Rin was a bit surprised at her new teammate. He knew the green spandex-wearing boy from academy days, there was a rumor that one of the boys in senior was a tojutsu expert. And it was him, so she was also glad that someone talented was replacing Kakashi in the team. Well, you guys know each other, so it will be a bit easy to break in. Minato said, before looking at Guy. I may not be your sensei, but for the ease of Chunin exams, I will be training you guys together. And this is also for Rin, your new teammate here is good at ninjutsu, but her tojutsu needs a bit of polishing, so you can help out there, I hope you can keep up your youthfulness. And just like that guy's eyes burned with passion, before he punched the air. This is youth. 
Wait is that Jinjutsu, or is Guy literally on fire? Rin asked confused, while the rest of the boys just shook their head. So what you are saying is there are two parties in the Chinook clan. And one is trying to rally up the forces of the clan and attack Kumo when they are in the war with Konoha, the rebel side. While the other party wants the Chinook clan to stay hold up the Valley of Death and stay there so that they can maintain power over them, the ruling side. Abito said a bit skeptical about the report. It was another Abito clone he was speaking to. Sounds about right the clone said. Abito looked at his clone. And not only that both parties have one set of unevolved versions of Katsuryagan under them. And both parties are in a struggle Nightwing, my man that's just too hard to believe a clan that no one has heard for almost three decades, suddenly has accumulated power to topple down a great nation. The cloner Nightwing nodded. This clone was made by Nightwing and three other bats, and so Abito would call him by that. And Nightwing prided on having a name, so calling him that was also good in some ways. It's not that unbelievable the clone no Nightwing said. I mean the Chinook clan is around a thousand members in total, which isn't lot considering they haven't been to war in for almost three decades. Even the Hyuga clan has bigger numbers than them, but they don't have the power like them. And all of them are massively good with their weird water release or iron water blood release and Jinjutsu. They are good, I have seen them. And so if they had a good plan, taking over Kumo won't be that of a problem when most of their men are trained from birth. I mean the Kumo cage reign is a monarchy. And they only respect the strong, if one can defeat their cage the other clans would unite the one who defeated their cage. So Abito looked at the situation and thought that the history of the Chinook clan was more and more like the canon version of the Achiha clan. Except for all made sense. The Katsuryagan is powerful. Being able to cast powerful Jinjutsus with touch or eye contact. But not even a skilled medical expert like adult Sakura could fully understand because of the uniqueness of the Jinjutsu. And not to mention everyone that's under the Katsuryagan Jinjutsu would be a ticking time bomb. Sure they would be zombies, but if that limitation could be broken off then, Abito could see the Chinook clan ruling the land of lightning with only a thousand men under their belt. Fuck, it sounds more and more like the canon Achiha clan. But if that's true, that means the Itachi Orochimaru hybrid, A.N. Enoyashiro, would kill his clan before they could do anything about it. Abito thought. Wait, did he kill his clan in the first place or was it his clan died of a civil conflict? I kinda don't remember. After living in the Naruto world for so long, he was having memory problems, and that's why he couldn't remember the man that killed off the Chinook clan. A.N. Again his name is Enoyashiro, so he couldn't tell who was going to commit the kin slaying. Or if it was the only reason the original series told very little about the clan to begin with. Meaning he would have limited time to get things sorted in that clan. A thousand Dejutsu users that could rival his own clan in Jinjutsu with two evolved versions of the Katsuryagan like the Manjekyo. That type of clan could be a valuable asset to Abito if he played his cards right. And that's why he was finding it hard to believe that they were fully wiped out and only two members coming out of it alive. But then again Itachi happened in the original. And so it's not that of stretch that something similar was about to happen in the Chinook clan. A thousand members or not, killing a whole clan by the night was done by the kin slayer Achiha. So even if something dramatic doesn't happen like that in the Chinook clan, just the civil war could cut off numbers in the whole clan. How long before you think both parties would fight each other and a full-out civil war to occur? Abito asked. Hum I don't know, I only gathered info for a month the valley of death is quite big. And small-time skirmishes often happen between two groups for resources and other stuff. So it's hard to tell, the small disputes have been going around for almost five years. So it might go on for another five before a full-on civil war breaks out. Nightwing said. Fuck that's bad the Achiha cursed. Is there a way to stop the whole clan fighting amongst itself? What if we kill someone from the rebel side? Nightwing hummed, before the Abito clone scattered into multiple bats. Leaving only Nightwing who sat on the Achiha's shoulder. It might work if we can kill the evolved version of the Katsuryagan user from the rebel side. That way the ruling side could forcefully stop the rebels from acting with their own evolved version of the Dejutsu. And the Valley of Death would be a great place to set up our summoning realm. There might be a Senjutsu spring like back in the Ryuchi cave, but the amount of Think Chakra there is good enough to make a good place as our new home. Nightwing said. Abito trusted his bats, but he didn't tell them the real reason why he was looking into other eyes. 
as our worldly knowledge would live and die with him. Abito had made it seem like he was looking for a good place to set up a summoning place for the bats. The cave here and the forest of death got the job done, but a skilled by Akugan user pokes around a bit they could probably find the cave. Even with him setting up anti by Akugan seals, if one were to poke around they could find out his hidden lair. It wasn't as secure as he wanted it to be. And Abito didn't have the flying thunder god no jutsu, but he had the next best thing, and that was the reverse summoning jutsu. With it as long as a few bats of his were around an area, he could probably go there and come back to Kanoha on the fly. So if he could make the Chinna clan submit to him he could get multiple benefits. But then again even if you are able to pull that off the whole clan would be on high alert that someone else is in the valley of death. And not trust anyone outside so back to square one. Nightwing finished. Abito just sighed hearing that. And I'm not half as powerful enough to do that am I? He had everything set up, but the only thing that stopped him was his own lack of power. Sadly no Nightwing said. I would bet that the person we have to kill is at least cage level, and that's a tall catch. So, I will have to sit this one out, or be powerful enough to take down cage level Shinobis by 13. Seems fair enough Abito snorted. But then again the third Shinobi war was on the horizon, so things could speed up, and the civil conflict might start sooner. Yes and no. The next shinobi war might make the rebel side excited to get their fangs out and attack Kumo. But they aren't stupid enough to do it without finishing of the ruling side first. So the inner fighting would go on for at least 5 or so years, before a full on war breaks out. Or one side massacres the other, which both sides want to avoid. Abito inwardly nodded. The valley of death was bigger than he imagined. It was situated on the back side of Kumo, filled with radiating chakra. So much so that normal Shinobis couldn't even live there, only the Chinna clan survived in there. And with Kumo having no clues how powerful the clan was, if they were united taking over Kumo when their main forces were out to fight Kanoha wouldn't be that of a bad idea. Nightwing continued, those eyes Katsurigan is powerful enough, and who knows how powerful their evolved version is. I mean, when I was little I watched Madara fight enemies of Kanoha, and it was over very quickly. And not to mention the whole clan was terrified when he fought Hashirama, I was still little back then. The bats lived longer than Abito expected. For example, Nightwing was considered young in the clan, and he was older than Abito's both lives combined. Grand Lady was super pissed that the Achiha used the Nine Tails as a weapon. Abito blinked raising an eyebrow. By Grand Lady, you mean don't mean the old bat. Do you? Don't tell me she doesn't like me cause I come from the same family as Madara. Uh, I speak many unnecessary things. So ignore me. Nightwing said. Sometimes he slipped in words and revealed too much, whether that was intentional or not Abito would never know. But he was thankful for it nonetheless. The old bat, or the grand lady as what Nightwing called her was like the boss summons of the bat clan. Who mostly stayed around Kashina, because of Karama, and without the Yuzumaki even knowing. Trying to protect the seal and all or anywhere, but where Abito was she was grumpy the few times he met her and didn't approve of him as the bat summoner. Speaking of that, in the few years Kashina also was successful in communicating with the fox. But it was neither there nor here. But at least Kashina got rid of some of her problems with getting out of Jinjutsu, because of the quirky relationship with the fox. Anyway back to the topic at hand Abito was too much frustrated about the whole situation. He didn't want the full clan to die, he wanted them under him, or at least try. But the problem was like how the Sharingan had an evolved version of it called the Manjekyo Sharingan. The Katsurigan had as well, and who knows how powerful it was. If only I had those eyes maybe I could find out some of its flaws and weakness. Even the Sharingan and Byakugan have a few so they should as well. Abido said to himself, while the bat on his shoulder gave him a flat look. About that we do have a few pairs after grave robbing a bit, Nightwing casually said, as if not dropping a bomb on the Achiha's head. Why didn't you start with that earlier? Abito looked at the bat, as if he was trolling him. Are the eyes fresh, can they be transplanted? I dunno. But in the skirmishes that do happen between the two factions, they leave behind a few bodies. And me and my boys collected some fresh, while well, the blood was hot heck, we even collected a full head that was decapitated from the neck. And it hasn't been six hours before we reverse summoned ourselves. Nightwing said, that should be enough right. Abito face palmed himself. 
Then take that out you lucky bastard, he said, lighting up like a kid given candy. I want to see the eyes myself. And like that Nightwing regurgitated a ceiling scroll from his mouth and unsealed it. They didn't have any fancy equipment to store the eyes, and Abito could see multiple of the eyes were rotting, but some were relatively fresh. And the decapitated head was also good. Oh, shit. Some of them got bad. Nightwing said, looking at some of the rotting eyes. Storage seals didn't freeze time and space when carrying stuff. And worked more like a pouch where things like bacteria and viruses could attack items. That's why body bags or other organic items were usually carried around by different sealing scrolls or submerged in special liquid only. But hey, if you give us the necessary items next time. We could bring you a whole body intact. At least a few Chinna clan members die each week, so we could bring them back to Kanoha for you. Abito's mouth gaped. You're telling me you guys can go into the Valley of Death, willy-nilly, and bring me back full corpses if I gave you enough equipment. Basically yeah. We are very good at doing spy work no Nightwing said. Just for the record. Did I ever say, you guys are awesome? Well, you are. Abito said, putting on his lab coat, his Sharingan flashing to life, and now time to get crazy. Abito ducked another slash, before he rolled forward, the kunai missing by an inch from his head. As yellow lightning flashed before his Sharingan he crossed his arms blocking the kick that sent him flying. The Achiha crashed against a rock wall, spider cracks forming behind. But Abito was all right, his hands turning normal from adamantium black. That could have broken my arms he grunted. Well, it didn't, Minato said lazily, as a boy in green shouted towards him green chakra flashing around him. Dynamic entry guy said, trying to kick the Namikas in the back of his head, while he was looking at his Ichiha teammate. Wu W, but all of it was for nothing as the yellow flash saw the attack coming from a mile away, and steeped to the side. And as the green genin passed him he grabbed him by the ankle, throwing him towards the Ichiha. Abito expected this and grabbed his thrown teammate mid-air, before tossing him to the side, where two of his clones caught him. So that he doesn't get injured. Fuck you blondie, Abito said, he took his hands to the side, black armament rods coming out from his gloves. Guy let's go all out and don't worry I will match your speed. Second gate of healing, third gate of life open. Green chakra flared out in his veins as the Achiha opened the first two gates. Yes, he knew he wouldn't be able to use Jinjutsu or any big destructive Jutsus, but they didn't work against Minato anyways. So he opted for using his gates to increase speed, and he could still use his Sharingan to keep track. Guy who was tossed to the side rolled to the side, adhering to his teammate's call. Then I will give it my all, my youthful friend. Third gate of life, fourth gate of pain and fifth gate of limit open. Guy who already had two gates opened, opened another three of his gates. This time his skin turned bloody red as visible red vines started appearing on his skin, as green chakra spread around like waves. The future green beast took on a running stance, before dashing towards the yellow flash. The ground breaking beneath him, wind twisting as he moved at unimaginable speed. Minato was wide-eyed a bit as he sensed Guy's speed. But that didn't mean he couldn't keep up, far from it. Yellow lightning surrounded the yellow flash, as he jumped above Guy's kick, grabbing him by the shoulder and tossing him away. Guy didn't go far, as he kicked the air with Geppo, and started an all-out Tejutsu fight with the Namikas. Abito joined him a minute later with his armament rods out, trying to attack him. While this was happening, Abito's clones would switch with his sometimes for a better angle. Even with that however, the yellow flash of Kanoha was keeping up with their Tejutsu. Even though Minato wasn't a Tejutsu expert, but as a sage he had learned the frog kata, and knew ways to use it even without Sinjutsu. So he could easily keep up with them. Lightning style. Great silver fang. Kakashi's voice echoed as he charged like a raging bull, as he moved like a snake toward Minato with his lightning-coated adamantium sword, leaving a trail of silver behind. Minato saw it coming and had to parry it with two of his tri-bladed kunai. But to his surprise, one of his blade cracked a bit where Kakashi's sword hit his own. Yet, the yellow flash couldn't think about it, as the Achiha moved like a phantom out from the ground, trying to strike Minato out of the ground. The Namikis smiled, before disappearing from the spot. Making both the Achiha and Senju crash into each other. Even though they put off their weapons at the last second, it did throw them off. Wow, taking on three of you is quite tough without my flying thunder god, Minato said, appearing on a tree branch. 
let's turn it up a notch impact kick. Guy said from behind as he tried to kick Minato from the back. But rather than avoiding it, Minato twisted around, a blue ball of chakra on his hand, and smashed against Mike Guy's kick. Throwing the boy off near the rest of his teammates. Of course, Abito's clones grabbed Guy before he could get injured. We did all that and yet we come back to square one. Abito said, as he stood up. And Minato was going to use his signature jutsu from now on. But Abito was a bit down that even with all three of them giving effort, the Namekas was only using the Rasengan against them. Not the sage mode like he hoped. We still have a long way to go, don't start complaining just yet. Kakashi said while the Achiha rolled his eyes. We almost got him. Yes, if I was a little bit faster I would have gotten him as well. I said from the side, we can do this, my youthful friends. Let us all combine our youthness again, and transform into Power Rangers. Abito said, before blinking. Okay, never mind. Wrong franchise. Why wow, don't let Abito get to you. Kakashi said with a sigh, he's kinda weird. Hey, I take offense in that. Well, don't get distracted just yet. Minato said, as he jumped forward from the three with two Rasengan in each hand. Scatter, Abito said, as all three of his clones and teammates got different ways. Minato this time followed the real Abito. Minato crashed on his Rasengan onto Abito, but the Achiha had already substituted himself with a log. And Abito had a surprise of his own. You know my broken ass eyes lets me copy a lot of things, Abito said as he grinned a ball of blue chakra of his own forming in his hand. Abito had to shut down one of the gates to use this. Minato was wide-eyed a bit, before grinning as he pushed forward two Rasengan clashing with each other. He was surprised that his student was able to do it even without telling him how to do it. Others in the Achiha clan had tried and failed, but Abito didn't. He kinda felt proud about it. Kids growing up quick. Dude you didn't even hit your twenties. And who you calling a kid? Both of the Rasengan clashed. While this was happening on the other side Rin was tossed away from her spot. But she was barely able to keep her balance and stand opposite to Kashina. Of course, it wasn't going well for the Genin. The redeed Jonin did a number on her. Rin on her end looked quite roughed up, with cuts on her shinobi clothes, fully covered in mud, water, and sweat it looked like she wasn't doing well against Kashina. The training ground they were on was also filled with broken holes and puddles of water. But gritting her teeth, Rin quickly threw multiple shurikens at her target, which the Yuzumaki deflected with ease with her short tanto. While this was happening Rin took the time to dash towards the woods and go through hand signs. Water style. Spiral water bullet jutsu. And Yuzumaki jutsu that Kashina taught her personally, along with others. It was already a week into the training, and Rin had improved quite a lot. As Minato was a jonin, he understood that Rin could be trained better by Kashina. Rin had good water affinity, which could be cultivated well with an Yuzumaki on hand. The clan was known for their good water release and kinjutsu users. She said, as the water from the puddles came alive and shot drill-like bullets towards the Yuzumaki. The Yuzumaki saw the bullets and smiled. Tossing her tanto towards the sky, she also made the same hand signs but faster. Water style. Spiral water bullet jutsu. And just like that Rin's jutsu was not only countered, but overpowered by Kashina's one. Easily destroying her jutsu and going toward Rin. The girl clicked her tongue and used body flicker to quickly move away from her position. But she saw a red blur coming towards, and she barely got the time to take her kunai out when Kashina's tanto made contact with her. Rin might have parried Kashina's blade, but the force made the small girl smash against a tree, almost knocking her out. But before she could catch a breather she heard Kashina call out her jutsu. Water style. Twin water twister jutsu. Rin was wide-eyed when she saw two snake-like twisters coming her way. The girl bit her lip and went through hand signs of her own. Water style. Water wall. Unlike the earth wall, the water wall wasn't that tough, yet it gave time for Rin to get out of the Uzumaki sight. Kashina didn't follow through and gave the girl some time. But to her surprise the girl ran towards her, going through multiple hand signs. Water style. Water slide jutsu. The feet of Rin covered with water chakra making her slide easily through the terrain with two kunais in each hand. Kashina adhered to her challenge and ran with her tanto out. While both women clashed with sword and kunais, sparks flew off. Yet one could see Rin wasn't doing well. 
Her movements were good, yet against an Uzumaki in her element, she was still lacking. And Kashina took one chance to unarm her student's kunais from her hand, while she stabbed forward. Rin didn't go back like how she would have and twisted to the side, the blade chipping on her left arm. But she was close now. Kusina was wide-eyed when Rin shot a senbin from her mouth at close range. She was surprised, but Rin's speed wasn't that exceptional, and the Yuzumaki dodged it with ease. Rin clicked her tongue, going back as she held the wound on her left arm. She was about to take out a smokescreen and bolt out, but Kashina called out. Stop, you should tend to your wound first, Kashina said, sheeting her blade. Your technique is quite good, and that Senbin trick almost got me just try to increase its speed, and you will have a deadly surprise attack in your arsenal. For a while, Rin didn't speak before she nodded. I will try she said, sighing a bit. But, you are quite amazing Kashina-san. I have improved quite a lot because of you in the past week. So thanks for taking out some time and helping me, both of their conversations was cut off when they heard an explosion go off from a nearby training ground. The same training ground where Minato was training the rest of her team. Boys and their explosions. Kashina shook her head. Anyway, don't sweat small stuff purple cheeks, I may be a jonin, but unlike others, I can't go out of the village so much, and that's why I don't have a team. And training you is actually quite fun. So thank you as well. Rin just smiled and was glad that she was getting trained by Kashina. After Tsunade, Kashina was a leading Kanoichi, and being able to train under her was quite the blessing. More so when the Yuzumaki shared a few of her clan techniques with her. Abito stood in front of the Hokage, who was looking at him calculatingly. So, you want to take a C-rank mission alone while you are still a Genin? Hiruzen asked with a raised eyebrow. You do know we have rules and, come on old man don't be like that. Abito sighed. I need to spread my wings, explore the outside world, and increase your kill count, so that you don't fall behind Kakashi. Minato interrupted. Honestly, what's up with your comical rivalry? And also please try to show respect towards the Hokage. He was a bit pissed he had to cancel a date cause of this. Well, I practically raised the kid, and if there's rivalry, and it's someone's fault then it's Hiruzen's fault, Kagami said lazily sitting in his chair, as he looked at the third Hokage. I mean you put two talented shinobis, and not to mention a Senju and an Ichiha on the same team, it would be uncommon if there wasn't a rivalry. Oh, you have no idea with how much bickering I have to handle in between them, Kagami-san. Minato said as a former Anbu that worked under Kukirizan snorted, before taking a drag from his pipe. Hey, I was a genin back then, Kagami said as if he felt offended. The Saratobi rolled his eyes, just like I said, practically a baby. The Ichiha made a pout face before chuckling. Anyway, why not give the boy a chance? Abito should be able to handle most problems, I have trained him myself so he should be fine. What do you think Minato? Abito does have the skills and strength to fight against your average jonin, and come out alive so, I think he should be fine as well. Minato said as he looked at his student. But as his sensei, I would recommend him to stay in the village cause of the upcoming Chunin exams, and because of the upcoming Chunin exams, people like Kagami and Sakuma were pulled out from their Anbu teams to stay in the village. Oh yeah, Abito's the showstopper this year, isn't he? Kagami said looking at the small Ichiha. Good for you. I remember those first days of Chunin exams man those days were chaotic. And you will most likely be targeted. But hey, the clan will brag about you for another few years, so it's a win-win. Abito was basically put as an eye-catcher in the Chunin exams to catch the eyes of any daimyo. In every Chunin exam which is held once a year, villages put powerful genin who are well above the normal genin into the Chunin exams, to put on a show for the rich country daimyos. Because other than the Chunin exams, shinobis could rank up with field promotions. But usually, villages put on hold powerful shinobis to show off in the exams. And this year it will be more so the tension between the villages is pretty high. Every village was looking for an opportunity to start an official war. Of course, the unofficial border skirmishes between each village ambus have been going on for a few months now. Sakumo, Kagami, and Danzo all there of their teams were stationed there to control the situation. But for the Chunin exams Sakumo and Kagami were called back. Every village wanted to get a good backup from their respective daimyos and daimyos from other small nations to back their own villages up. 
So basically Abido's whole team had quite the responsibility on his shoulder. Because of course, other villages star teams will target them to take him and his team out. But that wasn't something Abido was concerned that he couldn't handle. He was more concerned about officially getting a leave for some other reason. So, can I get a C rank mission? Abido asked, looking pleadingly towards the Hokage. And that made the Saratobi raise an eyebrow. Really, puppy eyeing me you have more chance in putting me in a Sharingan Jinjutsu than that. He rolled his eyes. But fine I will allow it, but it will be of books until the Chunin exams. Abido grinned, now you are talking old man. Give me one of them bandit extermination missions. The more the merrier. A young blood. Kagami said wisely. More like bloodlust but hey everyone went through a similar phase. Hiruzen shrugged as he went through mission scrolls. There's one in mission on the border of the fire country it's a good thing it's one of those safe borders. But then again be careful. The Hokage tossed the scroll which the Achiha caught just fine. When do I have to get back? Abido asked. Just be back by the end of the week. Explore the land, and don't engage any Shinobis from the other villages unless you have to. You're the best old man. Abido said, I'm going away immediately and I will bring back souvenirs. Yuhaha, I am a pure genius, Abido said, as he body flickered away from the Hokage's office. Sometimes my genius it's almost frightening. Stop being cheeky, you didn't do that much. It was Nightwing who was under his clothes. But come on you have to praise me for my genius idea. Abido whined a bit. It's funny how easy it is to act dumb and like a kid. It's almost as if I was one. Yes, yes inflate your Ichiha ego. The bat said, rolling one of his batsy eyes, while the other one was closed. But at least you can get out of the village without being suspicious. What happened was like every day Kakashi and Abido were having one of their word fights. And that was when Abido threw in there he killed more Chunins in the last mission, which led the Haddock to brag about his 100 plus kill count as a Chunin. And it was almost by accident that Minato was also there. So Abido came up with an excuse telling the Yellow Flash that he needed to get out on a bandit mission to increase his kill count. And like that he somehow convinced the Namikas to send his request to the Hokage. It was also a good thing that Kagami was also there to back him up. Mainly Abido needed to get out of the village to go and investigate Chugo's village. And as a genin, he would be only be allowed to take on carrier missions alone. And that would only take two to three days to finish. And it was quite the small window to investigate Chugo's village. But the whole situation with Kakashi helped him get a better ranked mission. Now he had a week to finish any of his works. Things played out quite fine in his end. It all started when the bat station there had reported an unusual amount of shinobis surrounding it. Kiri shinobis to be specific. Arachimaru had already been researching on the villagers with nature chakra absorption abilities. Even though the research was at its first stage. And the villagers weren't too cooperative with the snake, so he had to use fear to do some research on the clan. But due to the Chunin exams, the snake was called back to the Kanoha by the monkey. But that didn't explain the high number of Kiri Shinobis that were keeping an eye on the village. And right after Arachimaru left for Kanoha. Jugo's village was located in between the border of Kanoha and Kiri, in the land of Mangrove. And this country was a war-driven place due to the two wars that happened. The country had vast greenery but wasn't good for agriculture. As the land was filled with swamps, large trees and even larger animals. The people there mostly lived off of hunting, and due to the war any civilization that was built there crumbled. In both wars, a massive part of Kanoha and Kiri fraud on that land, killing and destroying a lot of stuff there. So it was basically used as a war ground. And it was a place where Jugo's clan thrived. Their natural instincts to kill and dominate of others, almost made them inhumane. And their clan wasn't any secret clan Abido expected. After researching a bit, Abido even found records of that clan in the Achiha archives. They called them madmen and monsters for transforming due to nature chakra. But no one knew their true value, not even Arachimaru. If he did he wouldn't leave the clan for some Chunin exams. Sinjutsu was quite rare in the shinobi world, and there was no way Arachimaru connected it with the clan. Jiraiya mostly gained his fame after he became a full sage. Sure they were named the Sanin after holding of Hanzo the Salamander. But Jiraiya gained his own fame after fighting for Konoha as a sage. Sinjutsu was quite rare. And that man wasn't even a perfect sage. And even the fact that Minato was a sage was also hidden. 
and those of his enemies that saw him in that state didn't live to tell the tale. Arachimaru on his end knew the value of nature chakra. He had scanned the snake recently with his glitch vision, the man didn't have any nature chakra in his coils at all, unlike Minato and Jiraiya. That's why the bats could keep an eye on him. Arachimaru still hadn't discovered the Ryuchi cave. But as now that he was doing research on that clan he would find out about it soon. Of course, Abito guessed that the snake didn't actually know about the true value of that clan, that's why he didn't give that much importance to it. But he would know soon and Abito wanted to do his own investigation before that. Actually, Abito wanted to investigate the clan after the Chunin exams. But things are different now. He only took up the date cause of the unusual amount of Kiri Shinobis that was keeping an eye on the clan. Either they wanted to kill of the clan, or somehow found intel that Arachimaru visited the place quite a lot, and wanted to kill him. In both cases, it wouldn't end well for the villages. That's why he was a bit worried as to why Kiri ninjas were keeping an eye on the clan. The clan wasn't that big, having only 50 or so members. But all of them could be Jonin level if they started using their nature chakra transformation. So they weren't easy to deal with either there's a reason why they survived in the land of mangrove for so long. Arachimaru of course was their natural counter with his snake poisons. And with that he was able to subdue the clan. That's why Abito was going there. Now that Arachimaru was back in Kanoha, he wouldn't need to hide form him when doing an investigation on the clan. What Abito didn't know was that all of this was happening due to another man pulling strings from the shadows. Abito looked down at the scroll in his hand, he was reaching the gates of Kanoha soon. The mission was a bandit extermination mission set in the north side of Kanoha, quite far from the land of Mangrove. But Abito wasn't worried about the mission. It was a simple mission, around 50 to 60 bandits, with only a few able to use chakra burning off and destroying small villages that were nearby, and looting any travelers that were in their way. Basically cannon folders. But Abito wasn't complaining. In fact with the mission, he would be able to experiment with his new Kitsuryagan. The bats were quite good and collected the dead bodies and their eyes, but out of the ten eyes, the bats collected only three of the eyes were functional. And Abito was somehow able to use one. And the bandit extermination mission would be a good place experiment with his new eyes. Even if it was quite far from Jugo's village. He had a good way to fast travel. Abito stopped at the gates of Kanoha. They blinked seeing the Achiha, and won so little at that. But actually, Abito knew them back in the academy. They weren't buddies or anything but knew each other quite well. How's it going, guys? Abito asked, tossing one of them the mission scroll. I have a mission. The two guards that were similarly aged to Abito looked at him weirdly. One station there was a Nara, and the other was an Akamichi. Both are perfect for the job, lazy and all. But hey, there was a certain art to being lazy, and Abito would rather have them in the gates than any Achiha or Hayuga. Those fuckers asked a ton of questions. A genin taking on a C-rank mission. The Nara said raising an eyebrow as if he wasn't one. Well, I will take time to attend your funeral. Yes, poor you. The Akamichi said, looking sad. Abito's brows twitched, it annoyed him even more than they actually believed that. Fuck you guys too. He grunted taking the scroll out of Nara's hand. Hope those mean cats piss you when you are sleeping on duty. With that, the Achiha was off with his body flicker. Works every time. The Nara said chuckling, while the Akimichi nodded with a grin of his own. You bastards one of the bandits said as he parried one of the strikes from his former crime partner. He was the leader, and as a former Chunin, he was quite frustrated with what was happening. What the fuck is up with you guys? He said kicking the attacker. You guys are sent to loot the village, why are you attacking us around the bandit camp, the same thing was happening. Half of the bandits were mindlessly attacking the other side, as if they didn't have control of their own senses. No amount of talk was getting through their former comrades' heads. It was almost as if they were mindless armies. Where did it go wrong? This morning they had set up camp near a village. Out of the 50 members, 30 would attack the village, while the rest would guard the camp with loot. But suddenly the other party came back early and was attacking their comrades. Are you guys out of your mind, but then something caught the leader's attention. All of the bandits that were attacking them had some redness in their eyes. Wait, are you guys in some kind of jinjutsu? Ding ding and you get a stab. The bandit leader was wide-eyed, as the pain hit him, he looked down and saw a kid stabbing him with a kunai. 
The kid looked barely 10, but when he looked into his eyes, something in his mind snapped, and he felt his body heating up. Now go make fireworks. With that Abito kicked the bandit out the man flew a bit far, before getting caught by another bandit. Ooh they got Len, the bandit that caught the leader said. Others came trying to help their fallen leader, but then Len their former leader started to bulge and inflate like a red balloon. What's happening the other bandit dropped his comrade and took a couple of steps back. The people that were around the area also stopped and glanced at their fallen leader. The bandit Len started to mutate and bulge like a red balloon, and gained size and looked like a living tumor beating and all, and before they knew it it exploded. Filling any nearby that was around the 10 meter radius. And like that, it also created wounds on the zombie-like bandits. As blood leaked from their wounds their internals started to inflate before going boom. The first one started a chain reaction, killing anyone that was nearby. Hum so using the Kitsuryugan isn't that different from the Sharingan. And casting the Jinjutsu with it fully identical to the Sharingan. But fuck it's eating away a lot of my chakra, but it might have something to do with the method I'm using, Abito said, before walking near a fallen bandit body, the man had bled to death. The people started running out of the campsite to get away from the exploding humans. Yet they couldn't, as a barrier surrounded their camp. Abito kneeled down and put his hand on his bleeding chest. Let's try the blood bending part of things. With one hand on the fallen body's chest and another making a single seal, the body burst into a spike of blood, creating large snake-like blood vines that attacked other bandits. Filling them as their body exploded similarly just like the other one a moment ago. Well, it's easier than I expected. Abido mumbled, heck, it's easier than performing a water-style jutsu. The Kitsuryugan is quite amazing. But I need to work on it if I want to use it in combat. You it's your doing. A voice called out, making Abito look over his shoulder. I will kill you motherfucker, but before he could finish the sentence Abito was just in front of him, and grabbed him by the throat. No, I insist let me kill you first. Abito politely said, as blood red eyes looked at the now terrified bandits. Both eyes were not matching which crept him even more. One of the attacker's eyes was a Sharingan, but the other one was different. But was equally terrifying. You what are you? The bandit managed to say, as he tried to peel off Abito's hand. I am vengeance. Abito said before he took in a lunge full of air and screamed right in the man's face. His head burst like a balloon, eyes, and brine used out, and his body went limp. Fatality the Achiha smiled a bit tossing the body to the side. These people were trash to begin with, so he didn't feel any remorse playing the executioner role. Now, let's not drag this for too long my test has been completed. So adios. He said as only a few of the bandits were left all of them trying to escape, but couldn't get past the barrier that he set up. It was a good thing Abito cleared out the hostages and victims before attacking the place. This place would be mess after he was done with it. Abito breathed in a lunge full of air, gathering chakra like he used to, and converting it to wind-based sound chakra. With that he screamed no more like roared forward, a jet stream of sound wave came out of his mouth, destroying anything that was unfortunately in front. Taking his head from side to side, killing anyone that was hit by the scream their body parts bursting like balloons. Abito breathed in a lunge full of air, gathering chakra like he used to, and converting it to wind-based sound chakra. With that he screamed no more like roared forward, a jet stream of sound wave came out of his mouth, destroying anything that was unfortunately in front. Taking his head from side to side, killing anyone that was hit by the scream their body parts bursting like balloons. But then again they were normal humans shinobi's bodies were a lot stronger. He could have used fire release to complement his technique, but it would have been overkill. After it was over Abito started to cough, breathing roughly. The sonic roar is still tough for me he grumbled, it was his A-rank jutsu, an evolved form of sonic scream. But at least I didn't take any damage. With that Abito burst into a bunch of bats, before they merged into the ground. A bit far away, outside the barrier, Abito who was sitting on a tree a particular hand sign opened his eyes. That eye is quite useful the real Abito mumbled. Using bat clones like this was the only way he was able to Kitsuryugan for now. After a whole week of researching the eyes, Abito finally came up with the idea to implant one Kitsuryugan into one of his bats. And fortunately, Nightwing volunteered. 
Like the Sharingan, the Kitsurigan took a shit ton of chakra, if you are not from the particular clan, and only Nightwing and a few other bats would be able to handle it. After putting down a couple of seals to shrink the eye to bat size, and to limit the chakra, Abito implanted the eye into Nightwing. And now when Nightwing would turn into one of Abito's clones, one of his eyes would have the Kitsurigan. He would implant the second eye later when the bat was used to it. Having both eyes made it easy to cast the Jinjutsu. Abito would of course get the clone's memories, but as this was the first time, Abito had controlled the clone remotely. An idea he copied from Itachi who used the explosion clone in the canon. Thinking again, the idea of implanting the eye in a bat was also from Itachi. So he was ripping off the Kin Slayer quite a bit. Nightwing how do you feel my friend? Abito asked as Nightwing popped out of the tree. His body was half submerged in the tree, while one of the bat's eyes was closed. I wanna puke the eye uses a lot of chakra Nightwing said, but it is quite good. So I don't regret it at all. Abito nodded, smiling, patting the little bat. I know and I did promise you to give you a full set of evolved Kitsuryugan when we get them. So you will have to build up the chakra reserves for that. There were two sets of evolved versions of Kitsuryugan in the Valley of the Dead. And if Abito managed to secure those eyes, he would take two for himself, while well he would give the other pair to Nightwing. The bats trusted him quite the lot, and he trusted them back. The bat clan did quite a lot for him, from information gathering to fighting his battles. So even giving those powerful eyes to Nightwing wouldn't make any difference. And this way Abito would have another set of powerful eyes to use even without having them on him. The Kitsurigan was quite powerful no doubt about that. Abito had fully mastered the three tome Sharingan, and he could say just by using one of the Kitsurigan eyes, it had the same amount of potential as the Sharingan. Unlike the Sharingan, the Kitsurigan didn't have three stages, and people were born with it like the Hyuga clan. Honestly, with eyes powerful like that why they were hiding in the Valley of Death was out of his mind, of course, he knew the Achiha was the one who made them run to that place. But still anyhow the evolved version of Kitsuryugan would be more or less similar to the Manjekyo. And giving a pair to Nightwing would make the perfect sidekick for him. Abido still didn't come up with a few Injutsu seal to seal implant the eyes into his Sharingan. So for now Nightwing was the only bat that was able to use that eye. He still had two other functional Kitsuryugan with him, but Abido was going to keep at least one for pure research. The similarities between the Kitsuryugan and the Sharingan were undeniable. It was a theory, but maybe as an Achiha Abido wouldn't have to fall victim to the constant chakra drain, if he plated the Kitsuryugan in him. But it was still up to research. Abido's thought process was cut off when two of his clones appeared before him, with two bags full of loot. It's finished boss. Good. Seal them in here. Abido tossed them a sealing scroll. And after the sealing of the loot was over Abido stood up. Now that the mission is finished. I can go back to my real work. Bats come back to me. The clones dispersed into multiple bats, before merging into Abido's clones, into his cloak and shadows. After it was done Abido opened his eyes and started going through hand seals. One would recognize the hand seals as the summoning one, yet it was different. Reverse summoning jutsu. With that Abido slammed his hand on the ground, and with a poof, he was gone. And with a poof Abido was there the Achiha opened his eyes, and the surroundings had clearly changed, almost everything was dark, and the surrounding was filled with trees and bushes. But with that, the boy fell to the ground panting. Shit that took way too much chakra than I expected Abido said. The boy was on a large scroll of some sort, and a bat clone was also kneeling down, pushing chakra onto the chakra circle, that let him summon him. Abido nodded and the clone dispersed into bats before entering his shadows. And it let him recover some of his chakra. Sure he almost went chakra blank due to the huge distance traveling with the reverse summoning. But nothing he couldn't fix with a few breaths of air. When Abido sent one of his clones to investigate Jugo's village, Abido commanded them to set up a reverse summoning there. And sure enough, he went from one side of the land of fire to the other side, in the land of mangrove. Crossing hundreds of kilometers in a blink of an eye. This wasn't flying thunder god, but it was the next best thing. Abido rested a bit to recover from the chakra drain. After that, it was time to work. Now, let's check things out, Abido said opening his eyes as the Sharingan spun in the darkness of the night. He performed one hand seal, and merged with the ground. The Shinobis of Kiri were stationed a few kilometers outside the village of the lunatics. 
That's what the locals called them. A clan full of monsters, a clan that made it hard for Kiri to properly take over this lawless land. The clan had weird abilities, being able to transform into beasts, being able to get along with the humongous mad animals in the forest, and even being able to command them. It was obvious that they thrived here. The land of mangrove was full of forest, oversized trees, and animals made it hard for normal people to live here. Kiri had a few watchtowers set up near the area in the Second Shinobi War, yet all of them were destroyed after the war was over. But now as the time for another war approached Kurigakur wanted to have a stronghold on this land. And removing the lunatic clan along with the dangerous animals, was the key to the target. If they could get a watchtower and a military camp here, they could not only keep an eye on Konoha, but also their allies like Yuzushi Agakur. And not to mention any navy expansions by Kumo. All in all, it was a great place to set up a camp for the upcoming war. Or so that's what the report said. On the inside of one of the hidden Kiri camps, two Shinobis were speaking to each other. Daki you fell for the misinformation again. We have been here for almost a week now, but we didn't see the snake San in here. One of the Kiri Shinobis said, pointing at the other. The Shinobi had the usual Kiri Anbu gear, but without the mask covering his face, his face was rather pretty for a man, but his short black hair and scar, made him stand out much. The other Shinobi who was reading a scroll looked up from his study. Did you come here to just complain Haruto? The man named Daki sighed, you know it wasn't only my plan to come here. You also had the same amount of contribution in convincing the third Mizukage, so stop complaining like a bitch. The other shinobi blinked, did did you just call me a bitch? You man whore and with that, he started sprouting out curses like a sailor. Daki just flatly rolled his eyes, as he picked his ears. Was coming here a mistake? Maybe. Taking this port wasn't that important either for Kiri or Kanoha. There was a reason why none of them didn't make any moves to take over the place before. The place was filled with trees and animals that didn't welcome outsiders. And not to mention the lunatic clan, some even said that they were the protectors of the forest. Whatever that means. They only came here to seek out the legendary San and Arachimaru. Haruto might be stupid, but he was the strongest Yuki clan member. And Daki himself was one of the most accomplished Hazuki and Kiri. And with both of them combined they were confident enough to take down Arachimaru. That's why they mainly came here. The clans in Kiri were getting bad reputations due to all the inner politics, and if two shinobis from famous clans could take down one of the powerhouses in Konoha, then their fame would go up even more. The current Mizukage was skeptical of them, and that wasn't good. Even though a part of them knew they might die here in the fight, but as shinobis they were all ready for it. And it wasn't like they were only two of them, they also brought a whole battle line of Anbu with them. So they were quite confident in their ability. Are you finished Daki said side glancing at his teammate. Who stopped his cursing with an annoyed expression on his face. If so go away Shu Shu I need to finish the paperwork for the whole camp. Or would you rather do it? You know what it sucks to be you. Haruto snorted. I have better things to do anyways. With that, he left their camp. While this was going on, nobody saw the red Sharingan that was poking out of a shadow inside the camp. Abito who was sitting on top of a large tree frowned, after getting the memories. Something didn't add up. After snooping into the camp made by Kiri, he found the reason why they were here. But that was the thing. Only a few people in Kanoha knew Orochimaru was working here. And that was only the route. So there could to two conclusions, either there was a rat in the route, or Danzo was betraying Orochimaru. Interesting the snake and the old fossil one wanting to backstab the other Abito mused. I am half sure Dezo's behind this, but doesn't he want Urachimaru to be the next Hokage? And that's not causing it's better for the village or anything he might think that, but it's obvious that Danzo wants to control over Urachimaru. So why would he want to kill him off? The info was going over his head. But he wasn't least surprised in the inner politics of Kanoha. When Root was involved, it was obvious that deception and backstabbing would be inevitable. He was actually glad that he convinced his friend Mukai Kohinata to not join the Roots or Anbu, and he was glad now. Now Hiruzen should still trust Danzo. So any shinobis in the Anbu could be exchanged to Roots. And he didn't want the one-eyed Byakugan prodigy to do that. Anyway, back to the topic. Why bring small fires here to kill the snakes? But then again I'm quite sure Danzo would have brought some big guns if he really wanted to kill the snake. 
Just having a few informers leak the info in Kiri would have brought more people to fight against the snake Sanon. Yet he didn't. What was the old man playing anyway? And he didn't care to solve the mystery either. Those fuckers could kill each other off, but he didn't want Jugo's clan to die off. Call him soft, but Jugo's clan wasn't that bad his clone had kept an eye on them for quite a while, and they were kind people. Very kind actually, proud warriors they were, yet they were very soft when it came to their families and in taking care of the forest animals. Sure they were messed up in the head whenever they transformed into their lunatic forms, but for some reason they didn't turn lunatic when they transformed near their home. Only if they went to the border of the land of mangrove. In general, the love and compassion that they showed for each other made Abito remember his own clan. The Ichihas were a bunch of arrogant pricks, no arguing there, yet the clan treated almost every child like family. Of course, Abito got some special treatment for him being a prodigy and all, but even Shisui got good treatment from the clan. Shisui wasn't very much liked by the elders of the clan, being Kagami's nephew, and his father living outside the clan grounds, which was a huge taboo itself yet with all of that, the boy didn't get any discrimination at all. If you have the Ichiha logo on the back, then you are part of the pack kingdom mentality. The years of living with each other before Konoha made the Ichihas more compassionate towards each other, and hostile towards others. And almost every other clan wanted them for their eyes, and that might have made them not show any weakness in front of others. It was a complicated thing. Abito obviously got the memories shared from his clone. And it didn't fit right to let the clan die. Maybe he was doing this because it was the right thing to do huh, would you look at that, I'm not a total asshole after all. Abito internally laughed. After years of living in this world, he might have cut a few of his emotions out even more so when Kagami started his Anbu training. Those horrifying days of listing and seeing other people get tortured, made wonders for his Junjutsu and information gathering skills, but it also might have scarred him mentally. Even though the training might be morally questionable, but it made him man up a lot. It was easy to see people get tortured and broken down, but it was hard to see people keep their lips shut because of their beliefs, to keep secrets, to be loyal until they went almost vegetable cause of torture. And yet all of their efforts were in vain just cause of the Amanaka had with their freaky mind jutsus. Abito shook his head, it wasn't time to sit around and think. If he wanted to save Jugo's clan he needed to do something. It looked like the Kiri Shinobis were losing their patience, so they might take action in a couple of days. And that's why he needed to act quickly. So what should I do Abito hummed. There were two options locate and remove the clan elsewhere or kill of the Kiri Shinobis. The second option would be quite hard. By Abito's estimation, there were two high-ranking jonins on the Kuridaku's side, and 15 other low to mid-level jonins that were for backup. Taking all of them was a risk that Abito wanted to avoid. And not to mention even if Abito succeeded in killing off the water bastards. More would come later on. The first option would be quite hard with his people management skill, and it might not work with Jinjutsu alone. There were around a hundred in Jugo's clan. All of them couldn't transform and mold chakra like the kids and injured, yet there were 80 Chunin levels, some maybe even lower Jonin level. Only two mid Jonin level, but that's a big if. Actually, an all-out fight against the Kiri Shinobis and Jugo's clan the Mad Clan would take the win for the clan on paper. But Jugo's clan weren't trained in the way of Shinobis, and Shinobis had stealth, and their main target was to kill while hiding. And the night time would be a very unfortunate time when Kiri could reduce the numbers by taking advantage of their stealth skills. It was sad, but none of the Jugo's clan members were censors. If they were Abito would have had quite the hard time hiding his bats, because Sinjutsu running through their veins and all. And not to mention two high-level Jonin Wanayuki and the other Ahazuki could do a lot of damage when working together. And even if Abito managed to get the whole clan out of the land of Mangrove, where will he hide them? Arachimaru would be looking for them. And Root wouldn't just stand by either. Abito bit his lips hard choices. The Achiha stood up. No need to overthink things let's try it out first. With that, he body flickered away. Maybe I will find some help along the way, what he didn't see was a single bat that stayed in that spot flapping its wings. By the one eye that had an eye patch, one could guess it was Nightwing. And with a poof, he disappeared from the spot. Two large built men with orange hair walked on the forest of Mangrove. Both of them carrying buffaloes twice their side on one side of their shoulder. The scene was almost comical if not for the huge orange-haired men's half-transformed face. 
Their right arm was morphed into something that wasn't human, and markings ran along the right side of their bare chest, with ash-like exoskeleton going on. And right there was Abido hiding in the shadows of the thick forest, observing the two orange heads. He would have come forward and put them in Jinjutsu for some information gathering if not for the interesting conversation that was going on. So the Achiha listened. Boy throw out your dream of going outside the forest we are people of the forest, and the clan wouldn't last outside these lands. The one who looked a bit older and had a patch of rough white beard spoke. He looked like a man in his fifties, but it was hard to tell because of the well-built physics. But father you ain't thinking things straight the son said, with a grunt plastered on his face. He looked much younger in his early thirties maybe. Haven't you picked up on the shinobis that are setting camp here another war might come? How will our people survive? Like always, fighting. The father said, with minimal emotion. And how did it end up for uncle and my brother that snake summoner has them now? God knows if they are dead or not. This time the father growled, don't they are strong. They know how to survive, and we misjudged that pale bastard's strength, if not I would have gone along with them, please stop making excuses pops. The son said. Even if I was there I have little confidence in beating that snake. Confidence is something you lack. The father said. And it made the younger one roll his eyes, father I have spoken to some outside people, and the snake guy was some big shot from the fire country he's not someone the likes of you and I can beat. And that made the father stop his walk. Boy haven't I told you before to not mix with the outsiders it's good for us and them. Don't give me that look in the last war one lost my mother because of some outside war, and another war is going to take place soon. And I'm not planning to lose my wife and son, here. The man looked at his son and growled, don't act like I don't miss my wife boy. He said, putting so much pressure on the buffalo on his shoulder, that cracking sounds could be heard from the dead carcass. The man glared at his son. The younger one returned the glare back with vigor. Oh, really now, but I don't see you doing anything to move our whole clan. The boy shot back. And you might be chief now, but if you don't change stuff, I will be sitting on an empty throne. The father grunted and started walking again, boy if you are meant to be a leader act like on and stop mixing with the outsiders. Our poison bloodline makes us mad at least in the forest, we can keep each other in check. The boy just grunted following his old man. Do you have any idea, how hard is it to control our chakra when we are outside of your forest? We would all go mad in a few days this forest acts as a medium to keep us sane. People might accept us at first, but the moment one of us gets mad and somehow attacks a going by carriage or village. They will send shinobis to kill us. But we will be killed even if we stay here the ninjas that are here are setting up camp for god knows what. But I'm sure they will target us sooner or later if they have enough shinobis. Remember father we lost almost one third of our members in the last war. I don't, don't speak anymore boy. We have been living in the forest for almost a century now we went through the two wars, another one wouldn't make the whole clan die off. The older one said, it might be crude, but some sacrifices need to be made Wakagami, you will listen to me as the future leader of the clan. Drop any ideas of getting the clan outside of the forest, I will have no debate on the matter anymore. With that, the man fully transformed gaining a foot in size, and a grey exoskeleton covering him. He grabbed the other buffalo from his son and jumped off. The son stood for a while before sighing, why couldn't things be easier? Shitty old man the boy was about to fully transform himself and follow his father when someone came out of the ground stopping him. The orange haired man was a bit startled seeing bats come out of the ground forming a man, and this one had a yellow mask that covered his face, and only one red eye that stared back at him. It screams the feeling of dread. The man wore a hoodie and long clothes that made him feel even more ominous. His fighter instincts kicked in and he wanted to attack, but with one look in that dreadfully red eye, he stopped. Now, let's talk things first. The man said, his voice deep commanding authority. And as if listening to his command, he started to relax. But that didn't make him less pissed off. The man was using some kind of jinjutsu of weakness that he and his clan members shared. What do you want? Nothing just want to speak to you about the whole shinobis setting up a camp near your home. The man said, his red eye had three tomos he noticed, which rotated slowly. It was almost hypnotic. What about them they don't have the best of intentions. The man said. He snorted, and you have. He growled a bit. 
You and every outsider have always bad intentions towards us what makes you think I will believe anything US, but the man cut him off. They want to get rid of your clan to make a base for the mist because of the upcoming war. And that made him wide-eyed. So he was right, but how do you know that, I have my ways I have been listening to you, and your father's conversation from the start I can be a lot of things, and being a ghost is one of them. He said. Now answer one of my questions what will you do? That made him stop in his tracks, of course, I will save my people. I don't doubt your intention boy what I mean is what steps will you take to stop your clan's demise? The man with the mask said. That made him think for a second. What could he do his enemies were stronger could he and the clan do anything to stop this? The only way saw was to get out of the damn forest. Maybe they could live elsewhere, but that wouldn't work either. Like his father said, even he had experienced it himself. The moment they get out of the forest, it's pretty hard for them to control themselves. And that would bring a plethora of other problems. Like getting hunted by the damned Shinobus. And he didn't want his son or any members of his clan to experience that. And he didn't want that so he only had one answer. And that I brought it to his mouth. I I don't know at least you are not as hard head I expected. You are too weak to go against the Mist Shinobus, even if your whole clan joined, I doubt they will be able to put an end to it so I might have another plan. The man said. And you will help us why? He asked, he had to be honest. He felt scared for some reason of the man, he didn't know why, but his body and mind wanted to listen to every word he says. It almost made him feel like an ant. Why you ask because I see value in you and your clan. That made him bite his lips. But more so I see the same foolishness that my once fallen clan went through, so I take pity in that as well. I am making no promises, but if you work with me, I might be able to make your clan not go on rampages outside the forest. And even built a well-hidden home for you and your people all I want in return is the man stopped speaking, humming a bit. And it made the orange-haired man even more nervous. For now you and your clan have nothing to give me. But I can take back the favor in the future, so if you want my help, gather people you trust and share the news with them, don't try anything foolish and attack the Mist Shinobus. Your hot-headed blood will not only kill you, but your brothers and son, and make your women be raped and turned into breeding whores. The world isn't kind outside of this forest. And as he finished the words the man started to twist no, the surroundings started to twist around his eye, before he got sucked in there. What the fuck just happened he blurred out. On the other end, Abito popped up a bit far, grinning a bit. Pulling a Toby Madara transformation on him was the best decision he made. And couple that with a good Jinjutsu and some low doses of fear, toxins made the man tame enough to listen to his words. Abito just now needed him to gather likely-minded people like him. Saving the clan shouldn't be tough then. Abito observed the orange-haired man for some time. What was his name again? Wakagami. Anyway, it was good to know there were some people in that clan that were thinking of moving out. Providing them with a new home would be difficult. Especially with their numbers being almost close to a hundred. So for his plan to work Abito frowned, looking to his side. Nightwing wasn't with him the Achiha raised an eyebrow. Hey, can one of you go and get, but before the Achiha could finish the sentence there was a poof of smoke, and a bat appeared flapping his wings. Okay, never mind. The bat with the eye patch flapped his wings before sitting on the Achiha's shoulder. And where were you? I was out to make some arrangement, and I think we might be able to share our home with them, Nightwing said. And that made the Achiha blink. You don't mean I have to hide them in the forest of death. It's kinda big. But that's a recipe for disaster. Hiding the bats inside the forest of death was easy, but a whole clan was almost impossible. No, I didn't say that. Nightwing said, I meant that we build another home outside of Kanoha, where some of the bat clan share their home with these humans. This way we can keep them from turning lunatic. Wait all of the elders agreed with that. Abito blinked again. The bat clan almost did everything he said, but this was sharing their secret home with an outside clan, and the elders agreed. Unlike a certain female elder, the other elders of the bat clan were very trusting of him. Sometimes he wondered what he would do without the bat's help. Yes all of them Abito smiled, before he frowned narrowing his eyes, looking at the bat. You mean even the old hag? Nightwing sighed, yes, even her. Actually, she was very much accepting of it for some reason. And she's even willing to give hand in making their home if she has some free time. I sometimes don't get her. 
Maybe she had something to do with the other elders agreeing. The Beedo blinked again, wait, you mean she's here with us? Most likely, she's very skilled at hiding. No one in the clan can peek her out if she doesn't want it. The bat said. Actually I'm not sure if our bat Jinjutsu will be able to control their rage fit as well as your Sharingan. So you might have to project your eye powers to control them I mean I'm sure my Katsuryagan can do it, but it takes a significant amount of chakra to do it. And I'm not confident in my abilities enough to do it either. Abito nodded. Actually, that was one of the bad things about the whole situation. He was betting on stopping any rampage of that clan if they turned insane with his eye powers. Yet he couldn't always be with them. And long distance Sharingan projection took a lot of chakra. Heck, it would have been easy to scoop out the black market for some Sharingan and implant them into the bats like how he did with Nightwing and the Blood Eye. Yet it would have the same limitation of taking a lot of chakra out of the bats. It would have been easy if there was a way to battery the implanted eyes so that they could have full access to the ability's weight, he was on to something. What if he sealed some chakra into the Sharingan before planting it into the bats? Not normal chakra, tailed beast chakra. Wasn't there a joke about the nine tails chakra popping out everywhere in the fillers and they could act as substitute Jinchuriki? Like for example Kinkaku and Ginkaku. They didn't have Karama sealed in them, and yet could use the chakra like their own, just because they ate some flesh. Fuck forget his eyes. He could seal some tailed beast chakra in himself and boost his powers. There's no need to keep a giant as monster in your tummy when you can seal only some of it and gain the same abilities. And tailed beast chakra was nothing to scoff at. He remembered there was a Sakura Shinden novel where Anbu researched on remains of Naruto and Karama's chakra from the Valley of the End, and they could basically go tailed beast cloak with it. Puck why didn't he think of it sooner? This would not only help Ibido in implanting more eyes, be it Sharingan, Katsuryagan, or even Byakugan into his bats, but also give other benefits as well. But all of it would take time, at least a few years with how things are going. And he needed fast results but he should start doing research on it. At least things were moving his way. But he still didn't get why the old hag bat agreed with Abito's proposition, and even help in doing so. But he didn't care much if he could take in Jugo's clan, helping them survive. He might be able to get them incorporated into his personal army. Every member of the Jugo clan poised a talent to go at least Jonin level, if their cursed powers were in check, so this might just work out for him. Huh, would you look at that having good intentions does help you in odd ways. The Achiham used. Abito looked at Nightwing, did you find any place outside Kanoha where we can build the new home? No that's still not been decided, but Grand Lady said, we should build our home near the land of tree, Nightwing said. It's not that far from the land of mangrove, but it would take at least two or three days to make a suitable base there. More if you add some other barriers to keep the new clan safely hidden. Abido contemplated that things would pace up if he got there himself. His earth style was better than the bat so he could speed up the process. I will go there myself, find a place, and build it with the others. The bat nodded. Abido grabbed touched the bat and sent some chakra into it, a technique that shares memories amongst the bat clan. Abido shared some of his plans on manipulating a certain orange head and a few key things, before cutting the connection. Nightwing be my clone, and I will leave a few other bats with you. Abito said. There were 50 bats on him that could make 10 clones, but then again out of the 500 bats that he could summon only they could be his clones. The others could do basic fear toxin stuff and elemental jutsus, but Abito could go there and summon the rest of them to build the base. But also he needed to keep a few bats here, his most skilled ones to keep an eye on the Mist Shinobus and the Mad Clan. Okay, but do it quickly, I don't know what will happen if the mist starts attacking and you aren't here, Nightwing said. Abido nodded, clearing a few other things before he set off to the land of tea. Who would have known that he would build his first soldier base in enemy territories? But then again, the country of tea is weak so he wasn't worried. And most importantly there were few nations where war won't spread out, and along with the land of hot springs, the tea country was there. Those two countries were visited by other countries' daimyo so much that the five nations don't want to attack their mainland. So it was a relatively good place to set up camp. Hot Springs would have done well as well. But Jurera is always there and Kanoha Shinobis were always going there, just one accident, and his base would be founded. 
How the fuck did this happen? Abito cursed as he got the memories from his Nightwing clone, and fuck the mist is stepping up their plan. He didn't fully finish the base in the land of T, but he had to get back to the land of Mangrove now. The mist will attack tomorrow, and not only that, but Wakagami didn't convince his clan either, this was a mess. But in those fuckers delayed the attack a few days, now he had to improvise. Abito looked around, at the huge dark cave, of course for anyone else it would be hard to see, but with his Sharingan, it was easy. The cave was large enough for at least half of them, and this would have to do. Abito brought two fingers to his mouth and whistled. And after just a moment a swarm of bats came to his front screeching from the flapping of their wings. I will go back, make sure to build the cave just like I told you. Don't slack off guys. Abito said, before going through hand signs, and poof he was gone. On the other side, in the land of Mangrove Abito, opened his eyes, deactivating his Sharingan, as he looked at his clone. This one had an eye patch on, of course, it was his Nightwing clone. A few other bats were also in the area, hanging down from trees or shadows. All there to welcome his arrival. Abito winched when the lack of chakra hit him, but all he had to do is a few breaths of air, and his chakra would be replenished. How bad is it? Abito asked, as he recovered his chakra. I sent you my memories didn't I? Abito rolled his eye, yeah, but I want to know your thoughts on the situation. Is it really bad? Oh, it's pretty bad. But we knew beforehand something like this would happen. The clone said. You will have to show yourself to the entire clan now things could get messy, and they might even attack. I trust your abilities to hold them off, but they have Sinjutsu Chakra running through them, their attack might hurt more than anticipated. So you will have to be careful. Abito nodded, I will bring all of my clones out. Hide in the ground, tree, buildings anywhere, if they do attack take the children and woman hostage. He said as he stood up. Making one hand sign and transforming into Toby. The orange mask with swirls. Of course, it was a transformation, and he could use his both eyes just fine with it. But in all-out fighting, he would have to quit the transformation. But he wasn't expecting an all-out fight to begin with. Hum I should have made myself the Toby costume rather than transforming. But oh well. No point crying over spoiled milk. Abido jumped from tree to tree going towards the mist camp, rather than Jugo's village. He had something in mind. And of course, his Nightwing clone and the other bats followed him. It was obviously night, and you could do something very clever at this time. They were going to attack tomorrow, no reason for them to have it easy. Abito stood on top of a tree, almost a kilometer from the camp. But he could see all of the things just fine with his combined effort of glitch vision, and his three Tomo Sharingan. He could have gone near with his near-perfect blending into the ground with his earth style. Ghost technique, but one good sensor and he would be toast. And he didn't want that. The bats could get inside and out of the camp without getting detected. He could do it with his clones, but personally, he couldn't do that level of stealth yet. Abido watched Mist Shinobu sit around the fire, having a chill time actually. Even the two high-ranked Jonans were drinking a bit. And that got him thinking. Usually Anbu teams, or from his Anbu training by Kagami, you weren't allowed to eat anything except ration bars during missions. Not even cooked food from your allies. Abido himself remembered the bitter taste of gulping down ration bars when he did the training. And that was horrible. And it seemed that the Mist Shinobus were a bit carefree, they were in the forest for almost two weeks now. And it seemed the two Jonans in charge gave them the permission to cook their own food. Oh, he was going to take advantage of that. Hey, guys a random question is your toxin tasteless? Abito said. The bats knew about his ability to see long distances, so they weren't surprised that the Achiha was so far away. On the note of fear toxin, not all of the fear toxin of the bats were smell-less. Some had smell, but others didn't. Only few in the bat clan possessed fear toxin that were both smell-less and tasteless. A deadly weapon. The clone that was beside him poofed, the other bats mixed in with the shadows, while Nightwing came and sat on his shoulder. Only a few in the clan can make that type of toxin, and me and another one can make that type of toxin. He said, not having any idea as to what Abito was planning. He couldn't see what the Achiha could. Good, Abito said, grinning. Bring the other guy out. Another bat came out of the shadow, flapping its wings. Boss you called. Good, Abito said, grinning. Bring the other guy out. Another bat came out of the shadow, flapping its wings. Boss you called. Abito blinked. 
This might have been the first ever bat that didn't introduce himself to his formally. I already like you, my guy. Do you have a name? Nah boss, but I sure as heck would love one. The bat said. This bat wasn't much different from the others, but as Sharingan could figure out a few differences, he was a bit of mane around the neck, and his wingspan was a bit larger. Good. From now on you though she'll be named Robin. Abito said, internally chuckling. He was always trying to give this name out to someone, and he seemed to be fit. And sure as heck made the other bats confused as to why their summoner named them after a bird, but the new owner of the name didn't protest. I like it, boss. Robin said, now can I get to be my own clone and cool I like Nightwing bro. Abita laughed, oh a demanding one. For now, you don't have to be on Nightwing's clone, take in charge of another clone, and the I will come later, if you are able to handle the stress and chakra. The bat grinned, vampiric teeth and all. This bat was on Nightwing's four bat team, which made the Nightwing clone. But now he would have his own clone. Wasn't that like being promoted? Yes. The bat cheered. What do I have to do boss? Well, aren't you lucky? Nightwing said, boringly. Before turning to Abito. And actually what are we going to do? Well, I first would like to know what are the full effects of your toxin fears. Or if you have one to begin with. Abito said. Everyone produced toxin fear of their own in the Bat Clan, and advanced levels of the users had other effects, so it was better to know. Some of them were outright weird. But not all had them. My fear toxin is thick stuff, a sniff of it, and you will be in dandly land in no time. Robin said, priding on his toxin fear. But other than that, the second ability is kinda weird. When I use them against humans or any other animals they usually make them fear water. So much so forget even drinking they don't even piss cause of it. Some even can't stand to see their own sweat and blood. It's weird. Abito's mouth opened and closed. Somehow I don't find it odd. He said, and the bat grinned. Abito then looked at his old-time pal, what about you? Nightwing looked at him, with one eye. My fear toxin is normal, scare people and all of that. But the bat continued, and that made both Robin and Abito gap their mouth. How da fuck is that even possible Robin said, shocked. Wait is that how you used to pull pranks when we were lil? You mitherfu but Abito interrupted as he narrowed his eyes, now all the sleepless nights made sense. Damn, dude you are scary, a freaking time bomb level scary I tell ya. He said as he shook his head. I really didn't expect that. The bat just shrugged. Hey, it was pretty subpar when I first awakened it, but I just had to make up good ways to use it. And it has a bunch of limitations as well. I just got better at it. Yeah, and that was using it on me how could you I thought we were family. Robin said, grunting. Even Abito was kinda pissed. Now all the things that happened when he started his fear toxin immunity training made sense. Abido wasn't fully immune to the advanced version of toxin Robin and Nightwing used, but they wouldn't attack him in the first place, but it was good to know what kind of secondary abilities bats had. The other bats that made up his clones didn't have secondary fear effects like these two here. But the elders of the clan, even the old hag, had secondary abilities. Then again he wouldn't summon the elders of the Bat Clan, they were kinda busy making the second home for the orange-headed clan. And God knows where the old bag was flapping her wings around. She might be here, but she was so good at hiding that even Abido's glitch vision with Sharingan couldn't pick her up. Maybe after he learns to use Sinjutsu or unlocks the Manjekyo maybe. But back to work okay, so we need to do it quickly and be super sneaky about the shit. I won't go even near the camp, because one good sensor and our plan will be toast. Abito said. The bats nodded. So, you go in the camp and mix your fear toxin with their food and drinks. That's it. But you don't have to be quick, take all the time you need. Abito said, I have learned one thing from fear toxin doing my four years of research on animals. Its effects are very potent if they are ingested rather than going through the lungs, and the effect stays way longer that way as well. So don't fail me, guys. Abito couldn't do his fear toxin research when he was in Kanoha. So he had to test them on the animals of the forest of death. And he came to know about this odd finding. It was kinda like weed, never in his life did he try that stuff, but he often found his friend saying that edibles were very hard hitting than smoking. So it was that way. And he found more proof after doing some questionable research on the Chunin of the tea country. Poor bastards. 
They dead now, but also the mist would get a very nasty surprise tomorrow. Guys go on do your magic. I will do my own things with the orange head. Abito said, sending his two bats off. Now he had some great acting to do. Let's scare some orange heads guys. He said to his bats as he body flickered towards the mad clan location. His Nightwing clone had previously told Wakagami to set up a full meeting with every member of their clan present. And now it was show time. Abito stood on top of a tree observing the whole clan that gathered in front of their gates because of Wakagami. The man was almost having a verbal debate with his elderly father about the whole situation. The current leader of the clan was Tamaki, Wakagami's father. The man wasn't pleased that his son gathered the whole clan for an outsider. The others weren't either, after Orochimaru attacked the clan and kidnapped one of them a month ago, they had little to no trust in outsiders. They weren't savages, before the first shinobi wars, other clans would often visit them for their unusual use of medical ninjutsu. They had a good relationship with the other clans of Mangrove at the time. But when the wars were waged they stopped coming here. So in the past 60 years, no one had officially visited their clan. Other clans that lived in the Mangrove, either migrated or died down, due to the flames of war. After that many attacked them with hostile intentions. So they were very skeptical about the situation. But some were worried as well, the village chief's son might not agree with his father on many things, but he also had the clan's interest in mind. And now he was saying that one of the major villages had sent killers for them. It made them quite worried. And also a bit curious about the outsider that was helping him. Abito waited a bit so that all of the clan could gather, sure some of them, like the weak and children hid in their homes. But almost all of them were coming. And Abito wanted to make it a grand entrance. Also, Abito stayed cause he wanted the bats to dabble some fear toxin in the air, so that they would more receiving of Abito's massage. The fear toxin in low dosages could make the victims be more understanding due to the underlining fear and submissiveness that came with it. So after getting affected they tend to not act rashly or hot-bloodedly. It was some subpar manipulation in a way. But Abito had no qualms in using it. He wouldn't tell them this, and he could earn their trust later after they came out alive from the whole situation. The small village of hundred people was located deep inside the forest, with many dense trees, most filled with swamps, and even from the outside, the village was well hidden. Forget Kanoha, this should be the village hidden in the leaf. The small village also didn't have any great architecture, only mud made houses where they would sleep. Most of them had more things outside their homes inside. All in all, it was more of a small enclosed tribe. Even the clothes they wore were mostly made out of plants or rough animal skin. The Achiha wore the yellow striped topi mask. Nightwing had problems keeping up the transformation when speaking to Wakugami, so the bad had carved out a simple mask from one of the chakra trees nearby. Pretty good actually, it even had some simple fuinjutsu on it making it durable. Abito would add some personal touches later. So Abito just needed to transform to get a bit taller and have the unique undercut hair. Actually, Abito had been overworking himself so much that he forgot that he would need to face off against Miss Shinobi. And having a physical mask would be better when fighting them. Sure he would have only one eye to cast Jinjutsu, but the other eye would also be able to see through the mask because of his glitch vision. He could use his glitch vision in mid-battle, and in many ways, it boosted his regular Sharingan capabilities. Being able to see all around in slow motion was quite overpowering. Even more so when the enemy thinks he can sneak up on you. He didn't need to use the breathing to activate it now. But the problem with glitch vision was it would give him a migraine if he used it too long. But it wouldn't be the case if he used the breathing version of it. His sensory breathing technique, where he originally got his glitch vision and super fast chakra recovery from was a broken skill. But it had one big flaw, his breathing technique couldn't be used mid-battle, because at that his breathing would be fast-paced, whereas the technique required complete tranquility and calmness to activate. That was why Abito had to invent ways to use glitch vision and chakra recovery breathing without going full on sensory breathing. His sensory breathing was weird in a way, but had lots of uses. There was that other breathing technique that only boosted his temperature, and even with his practicing eight gates, he didn't find any practical use for it. Maybe he was using it wrong. Or maybe it wasn't anything amazing, to begin with. Abito shook his head, it was show time. The whole clan had gathered in front of their main gate, and people were still debating with Wakagami's choice. 
And almost all of them were a bit scared, of course, that the fear toxin was doing its charm. So it was time to shine. A swarm of bats came out of the darkness of the forest in front of the main gates of the clan. The bats created a swarm, before the space twisted in an odd fashion, and a man with yellow mask appeared. Well, I didn't know I would receive such a grand welcome, Abito spoke in a deep voice, a bit of muse in it. Or I would have prepared myself for a grand opening. Go away, outsider. Tamaki the old leader said, his body already partially transformed. Your kind isn't welcomed here. Abito chuckled, a mean laugh. And that is supposed to scare me old timer. Father, don't Wakagami said, stepping forward. I don't know why you ask my whole clan to gather here, but now we are all here. So speak. A bit of tension in his voice. Right to business. Abito hummed. Then I won't delay either the Mist Shinobis wants to attack tomorrow and wipe out your whole clan. He said all so casually. And that made all the members of the orange-haired clan shocked. And loud muttering occurred, all tensed. The mad clan had a weird connection with the forest's animals. So they knew about the outsider's camp that was set up a few kilometers away from the village. And now suddenly a stranger was telling them that their small village of barely a hundred would be attacked. It was a lot to take. What kind of joke is that? The leader growled, glaring right at Abido. And they made eye contact, and of course, the Ichiha took advantage of the opportunity. You tell me Abido mused, his voice oh so deep. He crossed his hand and tilted it, do I get any benefits telling you that? Nope so then why would I joke about something so sick? B but we can't just trust your words, Wakagami asked. We can't just take your word for it. Oh, but you have to take my word for it. Abito scoffed. If you don't believe me then ask the forest animals that you so secretly communicate with ask them if they are preparing for something. But currently, they are drinking to their joyous sick mist custom actually. They would celebrate before commenting on small genocides. But if you still don't believe me, you can ask your animals to check again tomorrow, and I am sure you will see them prepare for something big. You how do you know about that, Tamaki asked with wide eyes, shock and a bit of fear on his face, as he looked at his son. Their connection to the forest animals were a clan secret, how did a stranger know that? Did you tell him? No he shook his head, just as surprised and worried. I know a lot of things old timer and I have my ways. But I didn't come here to speak about myself. Abito said. I have come to make a deal. For some time no one spoke. And that would be? Wakagami asked. I haven't fully set up a place for your clan, but I did my best with the short amount of time I had. I can give you a place where you can go, and live Abito paused letting the information seep in. No one would bother you there my bats will make sure of it. You want us to leave the forest, Tamaki asked, a bit of rage in his voice. It seemed like the old man was a bit resistant to the fear toxin. You might have made some grand plan on killing our clan mid-journey for all we know. Abito chuckled rather than getting offended. You really think I would need that much to kill your clan? You people aren't even Shinobis. I gathered some of your clan secrets just by having my bat swoop in here and there. It wouldn't be hard for me to poison your foods or any other way to reduce your numbers. But I haven't done that did I? With that, he continued his amused laughing. It made almost all of the clan shiver in fear. Rather than getting angry they only felt fear. Some getting more affected than others. Don't overestimate yourself Tamaki growled. You are just a coward that hides behind his mask you really yes, yes, I might have pushed some wrong buttons. Why are we arguing anyway? Abito interrupted. And for you knowledge, I didn't misjudge my or your clan's ability. I have survived in this world for long enough to know the consequences of that. But you on the other hand you might be old, but you haven't explored the outside. Your clan doesn't lack strength, but they lack skills. Tamaki gritted his teeth, but his son held him back. Shinobis kill in the dark of night, like cowards. He stretched the last word. And yet these same cowards will be the end of you if you don't corporate with me. One of the members of the clan spoke. What do those damn bastards want can't they leave us alone? It was a boy, a bit younger than Abito. We didn't do anything. Oh, but they see you as a hassle. Abito said, they want to build their camp here for the next shinobi war. And clearing out any future enemies would do them better. We can fight them ourselves, but we won't leave our home. The boy gritted his teeth and shouted. I won't leave mama behind, he said the last part to himself, but Abito heard it just fine. 
What's your name boy? Abito asked. He was interested in him. The boy had quite the will. Seeing this Wakagami stepped in front of the boy. But the boy didn't stop glaring at his masked face. My name is Jugo. Abito smiled underneath his mask. Well, wasn't that a coincidence? The boy lost his mother the last time we were attacked, Wakagami said. Of course, it would be Orochimaru. He doesn't know anything were all of them scared that Abito would attack a defenseless boy. Huh, the fear toxin was quite effective. Abito chuckled. Then tell me, boy, would your mother want you to get killed? Or even worse get experimented on for you clan's abilities and never see the daylight. Would your late mother want that? The boy didn't speak. Well, she wouldn't, Abito said. The mist obviously has plans to kill your clan, but taking a few boy and gals to breed your clan's abilities into their ranks is a common thing that happens in the mist. Abito said, looking at the whole clan. So I advise you to think this through. All of you. Tamaki spoke again, he had cooled down a bit. But the man was still reluctant. Even if you say that we can't leave this forest our clan is called the Chidoku, poisoned, clan for a reason. If we get out of the forest, we turn mad very quickly. It won't get us any benefits. He said, with a bit of tiredness in his voice. One accident of our clan attacking due to our mad rampage. And the nearby village would send powerful shinobis to wipe us out. So it doesn't matter where we go eventually we will be hunted. Abito chuckled. You think I don't know that? He said, in a challenging voice. Okay, try to transform them. Abito chuckled. You think I don't know that? He said, in a challenging voice. Okay, try to transform them. The leader raised his eyebrow, but that's when he noticed that he didn't have his partial transformation anymore. He tensed a bit, trying to gather the green chakra that made them call upon their poison sleeves, yet he couldn't. With panic in his voice, he looked at the masked man. What did you do? Abito laughed once again, playing his character just right. As the bats dosed the fear toxin up a bit. The other members of the clan rather than being frustrated or angry, started feeling dread of him. But at the same time, they couldn't feel any malice from him. Just fear. Wouldn't you like to know Wakagami stepped forward his body partially transforming. Even though he was afraid like the others he had a bit more control as a warrior. Stranger I do thank you for your information, but return my father back to his previous self, or I will think this as an attack on the clan. Rather than worrying Abito laughed, an amused deep laugh. Oh, we wouldn't want to do that now so the Ichiha snapped his fingers, and Tamaki fell on his panting, not understanding what happened. But he could use his chakra again, and it made him quite frustrated and fearful at the same time. This person is more dangerous than the pale snake bastard he thought. Father Grandfather the leader stood up, with the help of his son, and he was a bit tense. But he spoke again. I apologize for doubting your abilities, but you have to know we don't fully trust you for what you are saying. Can you really stop us from turning mad if we are outside the forest? He asked. I do not know what you did to me would work for all of us in the clan. Abito hummed, it might work, it might not he said. I haven't tried claiming one of you down with my powers outside the forest. But there are more than one way on doing that. He wasn't lying. He thought of this before, he had studied Uzumaki seals a lot. And making a chakra suppression seal that would stop the chakra flow if someone commands it shouldn't be too hard to make. But the problem would be if he had the sealed key and they had the seal lock, it would make him look like a jailer. Like the Hayuga clan. So he would just need to set up a personal seal lock and key for each person. And have them keep their seal lock, so if they start to go mad, they can use their seal lock to stop it, and key to open it later. In theory, it wouldn't be too hard to make, as the base of the seal would be the 4 trigram seal or 4 symbol seal. Which he was researching anyway due to Katsuryagan implantation. So Abito could cook something up. But for now, he needed the clan to agree. He didn't know why the old lady was helping the clan, but then something came to his mind. In the original series, Orochimaru found the Ryuchi cave due to Jugo's origin of power or something like that. Maybe the Chidoku clan had some connection to the bats, that's why she was being sentimental with the clan. Well, he didn't care much. But if he did things right, maybe Abito could get recognized by her. Abito didn't like the old hag, but she was the most powerful in the bat clan. And she even knew the previous bat Sinjutsu user, gaining her recognition, would make his road to power easy. 
It is quite hasty Tamaki said, making Abito come out of his thoughts. But are you sure that you can have the whole clan migrate? And where will we go? Abito nodded. To the land of tea. And that made all of the Chudoku clan members frown. But it's too far. It would take at least one day to even cross the land of mangrove for a warrior, but we have children and elderly that can't keep up the pace. Wakagami said, speaking everyone's mind. That is a problem. Abito said, that is why I plan to make two groups. Two third of your clan will leave, while the other would stay. The mist will hunt you down if all of you move at once. And I am going out of my way already by setting up a place in the land of tea, where you can call your new home. Defending against all of the Shinobus mist sins would too much for even me. Then I and the strongest warriors of the clan will stay Wakagami said, we won't let the mist bastards take our home that easily. The other warriors roared at that. They were still reluctant to leave their home, but almost all of the clan knew it was the only way. So they were ready. But Abito didn't like that part. The fight with Mist Shinobis will be tough, there aren't any yellow flash here, and Mist Shinobis are far more stronger and skilled than some tea bastards. More so when you add almost all of them are either Hazuki or Yuki. And there was a high chance that those who stayed here would die or in better cases, lose a limb or two. Mist Shinobi loved to use hit and run tactic with their hidden Mist Jutsu. They were skilled sword users, and even though the Chudoku clan had warriors who were almost all of them Jonin level in strength, but they lacked the skill. Like for example, the Sharingan Jinjutsu Abito casted wasn't that powerful. And yet Tamaki was caught in it. And couldn't even notice that he had some outside influence. They were more or less brutes, and if Abito could easily find their weakness was Jinjutsu, then for a skilled shinobi it wouldn't take that much time. They would just have to play the far game, and put them in a Jinjutsu, before cutting their heads off. Abito might be thinking the worst. But it was a highly possible scenario. The clan didn't have any knowledge in ninjutsu or jinjutsu. They had their unusual tojutsu with their transformation, but that wasn't too hard to fight against. Abido had his bats observe the clan for weeks, they were pretty unskilled in fighting. But it was to be expected. They were kinda smiler to Naras in a way. Naras were originally hunters in the land of fire. But after joining Kanoha, they started their shinobi practice. They transform their hunting skills, shadow manipulation, and their high intellect as weapons to make up for lack of skill. But now after joining Kanoha they were some of the feared Shinobis Kanoha produced. Of course, it had all to do with, breeding with bunch of Senju, and increasing their chakra reserves with Akamichi chakra pills. But it did the job. So it was quite common that the Chudoku clan or Jugo's clan, would be this weak now. Jugo was under Orochimaru for who knows how long. And you don't just stay captivated under the snake sanin and not pick up skills. So all in all the clan had a lot of potential in them. I wouldn't advise having all of the strong warriors here when fighting mist. Abito said, I will be here, so it won't be necessary. So keep some of the strong members of the group that will migrate to the land of tea. That way if mist shinobis do get past us, you could stop them rather than being defenseless. Abito didn't want all of the stronger warriors to die here. He might need their help in the future when he trained them to some levels. Call him a manipulating bastard for thinking this way, but he was also risking his life for a clan that did nothing for him. So of course he would take something in return. But at the same time, Abito's words made sense. Even though Abito was kind of lying. He had a last resort way to deal with a missed Shinobis if things went that far. And other than some wild beasts the clan wouldn't be stopped by anyone, his bats would make sure of that. Almost all of the bats had been notified, and the whole 500 of them were in the land of mangrove, and in the land of tea. Abido had summoned them before for making the cave, and wouldn't need to waste any chakra summoning them now. So the group that was going to the land of tea would be super safe. But Abido kept this to himself, he felt kinda bad that this was the only way. But think of this, this way. If all of the stronger ones join me in battle, most of them will die with their current skills. But if he takes half strong and half mid-tire fighters with him, the other strong ones could train the future generation and keep themselves safe in the future. It did make the Achiha feel a bit sick that he was thinking of sacrificing a few people, and not sacrificing others for his personal gain. I really did change didn't I? He thought to himself. If it was the previous him, he would have tried to save everyone. Even if the consequences would be foolish. Maybe he wouldn't need to make any sacrifices if he was strong enough. 
It felt just bad sacrificing some random people that he didn't know. What if there came a time when he would need to sacrifice the people he cared about, like Granny Mae, Shisui, Kashina, Kagami or even that damn Kakashi or Minato. His heart stung even just thinking of that shit. I will have to get stronger. He said to himself, no I will be stronger. Then what should we do one of the Chugoku clan members asked. It brought Abito's attention back. That is for you to decide. Abito said, my powers have weakened. And for those of you who will stay here, you will have to stay knowing that you might not see your family tomorrow. That made the whole situation even more grim. But no one protested, maybe the fear toxin was keeping them this way. We have the numbers advantage. Abito continued. Our enemy numbers are 17 in total. So just 20 of your mid to strong fighters should be enough. That should let us slow them down, while I can reduce the numbers this way. So I have to sadly ask you to sacrifice your kin so that your clan might see another day. Know that you will be remembered by the next generation for your bravery. There was another grave silent. So Abito continued. You might wonder why I am helping you a stranger that has nothing to do with your clan. But you might not know, but your clan might have some deep roots with one of my closet allies. And I have seen many of Keen fall in battle, and even my own clan get wiped out due to not taking action sooner. I hope you won't make this mistake. His voice was almost rough in the last part. Now Abito was just bullshitting his way through. But it was necessary. He had no damn idea if the Chidoku clan had any relationship with the Bat clan cause of the Ryuchi cave and Wetnet. But it was highly possible. And he added the whole sympathetic part well just to get some relatable sympathy for them. Manipulating 101, if he said so himself. Wakagami spoke first. Father you go with the rest, me and my hunting team will st, don't be a foolish boy. Tamaki cut him off, before turning around to look at his people. Listing my people. This is my last order as your chief, go live your lives and take my foolish son with you as your next chief. Let his old man die here as a warrior in the land where he was born. Wakagami was wide-eyed, you damn old man frustrated he was, I will stay here, but he was cut off when Tamaki half transformed his hand and punched him in the gut, knocking him off. Take my son with you. He said coldly to another member of the clan who nodded. Uncle, Jugo said. But and the old man did something similar to Jugo before the boy could retaliate, he knocked him out. Take my grandson as well. Tamaki spoke again. Those who want to die as warriors raise your hand. He said, raising his own. And sure enough, seeing the old man's action, almost 30 of their clan members rose their hands. It made their family members weep to see the action, but no one stopped them. It was war, mother will lose their son, wives will lose their husbands that was the way of the world. I appreciate your help, Tamaki said, before he started to choose amongst the 30, taking a mix of mid to strong fighters, until their numbers made 20. The rest of them were tasked to go with the group that would leave. Abito also noticed almost all a fighter were above their mid-30s, meaning the chief didn't want any younger generation to die in this war. Abito spoke again, I know it might be sudden. But you will have to move in less than an hour. So if you want I can help you with your packing. Tamaki frowned. I don't see why not. But it's not like we could take our houses with us. Abito blinked. Actually, you can. He thought. But he had other plans for the houses. Abito made a hand seal, and eight identical of his came out of his shadows, Abito made another hand sign, and took out a huge chunk of sealing scrolls, from his sealing bracers. Actually, these were in his hand bracers for years, from the time when he was still practicing his sealing arts with Kashina. He would make these and sell them to Konoha Shinobis back then. But after his fame got wild, the Achiha gave him quite a lot of funds. So he had a lot of them hanging around. How many fucking things were in there, in his sealing bracer anyway? He actually didn't know. As a seal master, he didn't actually have to manage space. Whenever the space would get cramped up, he would add more space to it. So it had a quite a lot of things in there. Do not be afraid, Abito said, they are my people. And they will only seal your stuff, so you don't have to worry about packing things in the future. And you can move nimbly. Tamaki and the other members looked at Abito skeptically, so Abito demonstrated sealing a nearby bench in it. After that things moved quickly. After all of them gathered the warriors who will be participating in battle, said their last goodbye to their loved ones. And they started leaving. Seeing the 20 fighters Abito spoke again. 
I want your people to just hold off the mist Shinobis. I have already made some preparation that when they attack it tomorrow night they will have problems in fighting us. So you will have just to hold them off. Don't be brave and try to kill them by yourself, they are skilled Shinobis and will use anything to their advantage. The 20 fighters including the former chief nodded. They felt a bit lonely with their empty homes. But they had the drives of warriors in them. They knew what to do. Me and my people will finish them off, Abito said. He didn't reveal to them it was his clones. That way they would think Abito had backup when he was just here alone. And I will also have them set up traps around the area. So when fighting them, try to fight them nearby, so that you won't be caught by the traps, if they plan to flee or target the other group. They nodded. Actually, Abito was going to set up an Uzumaki barrier when the Mist Shinobis come and attack. His bats will power the barrier so that no one except him could leave or enter. Not even any summoned animals. Actually, there was a simple barrier for that in the Uzumaki seals as well. Abito wondered why Arachimaru didn't use that against Hiruzen. Without Monkey King Enma, the fight wouldn't take that long. But the barrier had other uses as well. Like for example he already set up a shit ton of explosive seals in the underground. So if Abito sees that his team is losing, he could just get out and let the explosions do his things. Ha, huh, he kinda understood why the Ichiha clan was so afraid of the Uzumaki clan back before. I mean give them some prep time and they could set up the full terrain with explosives. And what would fancy eyes do then, other than see themselves die in slow motion? But it was good that he studied the arts himself. Yuzumaki's were damn broken characters. And that wasn't the only thing he was setting up. He didn't doubt the Bat Clan's ability, so Nightwing and Robin should be successful in putting toxins in their system. So the fight shouldn't be that hard, if something unusual doesn't happen. I do not fear the fight we will have. So don't fear it either. With that Abito gave few other instructions to carry of. Actually, Abito was a bit scared about the upcoming fight with the Mist Shinobis. Even with all the things he prepared. One of his flaws was his low chakra reserves, which were only Chunin level. Abito could compensate with it his quick chakra recovery, and even keep up with the likes of Kakashi when using it who had mid Jonin level chakra but just one wrong moment, and he could get seriously injured. The only reason why he could use his bat clones, was because it took only a few chakras out of him to make the clones. The four bats inside the clone would power the clone themselves. The bats really helped him quite a lot. Abito was also worried about getting injured. Shallow wounds he could fix, but getting a limb chopped off would be detrimental for the future. There weren't any ways to regrow limbs, and attaching back limbs was just as hassle. Never mind the fact that he would need to do it by the Bat Clan, and hide it from Kanoha if it ever happened. But if Abito could pull this off. Not only will he be able to get the Chidoku clan under him, but it should also in theory slow down Rajimaru's path to researching curse seals. But the snake already kidnapped one of the Chidoku clan members before. So he wasn't sure about the whole idea. It would also be good if he could convince the old hag to make him a curse seal or help him in creating one using Chidoku clan abilities. That would boost his powers quite a lot. Grand Lady of the Ryuchi Cave they called her the Black Witch in her times, causing fear in her opponents before taking their life. When she was in her prime, she was feared by all. But that was a long time ago. Long before what today's humans called the Warring State period. Bats of the Ryuchi Cave a name that lost its meaning. Even her who had seen her clan in its full glory, knew there was very little chance to get that honor back. The Ryuchi Cave was now under the snakes and there was no way to get that back. The bats now focused on stealth, a key skill to survive the attacks of the snakes. They started using it after the snakes took over their former home and started a bat hunt for them. They would hide, steal, lie and do anything to survive the snakes. And stealth was the best way. But it seems that the bats have forgotten their other specialties and only focused on stealth. The snakes had their poison, the same way the bats had their toxins. Yet without any spark of Sinjutsu in it, the fear toxin of the bats were nothing more than just cheap gimmicks. Even with that no one in their clan focused on the fear toxins to that degree as well. Only a few like the newly named bats Nightwing and Robin were exceptions, along with few others. And it made her sad. Even the stealth skills of the bats degraded over the centuries. It was all due to not having any access to their former home. Stripping the bats out of the Ryuchi cave made them weaker in more ways than other. 
Without her former home, she couldn't even pass down the knowledge to the future generation. But that was just a thing of the past. In her long 500-year-old life few things surprised her. And the child Achiha was one of them. Abito was the new summoner of the Bat Clan. At first, he thought nothing of it when Nightwing made him their clan summoner. Seeing nothing special on him. Yet she was proven wrong from time to time. Unlocking the Sharingan at such young age, and mastering the clan's abilities. Being trained by some of the strongest humans out there, she was quite impressed. More so of his out-of-the-box thinking. She had been there when Karama was out, giving them a place to rebuild their home. The fox was arrogant, yet he wasn't the monster that people thought him to be. The Achiha understood that, even went far as to convince the new jailer what was her name again, oh, Kashina that the fox might have intelligence, and not to think of it as a mad animal. It made the lass loosen up the seal on Karama, and even communicate with the fox. She was just happy that their one-time protector was getting some deserved respect. And in a way, she quite liked what the Achiha did. But she was still sore on the boy's clan involvement in capturing Karama in the first place. She still remembers the days when the giant-clad blue monstrosity subjugated Karama after almost destroying their second home. And he also had the same eyes, Madara Achiha was his name. Madara was strong, strong enough that she knew that she stood no chance in fighting him. So she had stayed back and protected her small clan. But that too was a thing of the past, maybe she should reconsider things. The new surprise that the small Achiha gave her was from a clan that had deep connections with the bats. The orange-haired clan, or the Chidoku clan, had many bat summoners. It was around the time when the Ryuchi cave was under the bats. After getting their homes stolen from them, the bats lost all connections with their summoners. And the snakes took it as a chance to get to the orange-haired clan. The Chidoku clan had a very deep bond with the bats, each generation having a sage from that clan. Yet the snakes poisoned their bloodline, mixing the nectar of the Ryuchi cave with their poisonous venom, and breeding that into their clan. All for some cruel research done by the Hakuja Senen, the White Snake Sage. It made all the new Chidoku clan members use Senjutsu, but they were quite unstable. Turning mad monsters not being able to control the fear toxin and snake venom in their blood countering each other, while the nectar pulled Senjutsu into their body. It was sad really. All of the clan had attained an imperfect form of sage because of the Hakuja Senen, but she didn't perfect their form. And made it so if they left the forest they would turn mad due to the influx of Senjutsu Chakra and die. Hakuja Senen made her own Senjutsu Venom which she injects into her chosen few summoners, so they could attain the level of sage. But she didn't share it with the Chidoku clan, setting up some twisted seals, so that their Senjutsu Chakra absorption would be minimal here. Really, crude seals, but then again not everyone had the skills to poke into the Achiha clan compound and learn advanced Fuinjutsu from them, without them even knowing. Anyway, Abito, that boy wanted to save the clan. All because he saw his own clan in them. Because it was the right thing to do that boy was going to get himself killed. No good deed goes unpunished. But that didn't mean she wouldn't help out the boy in his endeavor. Even if the boy somehow made the Chidoku clan get outside of the forest of mangrove, and managed to control them from going mad with his Sharingan. It would be a temporary solution. After some time the snake clan would be bound to know. They might send some heavy hitters to kill off the remaining clan. And that would bring the bats into the mix as well. Which she certainly didn't want. So she was going to help the boy in creating a new home for the Chidoku clan where they could live without turning mad and even find a way to fix their poison bloodline. None in the current Bat Clan knew about it, but she was a sage herself. She could fix what that Hakuja Senen did with a bit of tinkering. She was a sage because she was able to bathe in the Ryuchi Cave's nectar and overcome the trails. There was no other way a new sage of the Bat Clan could be made and, but it wasn't like he could find a way to gather Senjutsu Chakra with research alone. But all of it before later. She took the first seat in the row, to watch the fight that was going to ensure below. Between the mist and his summoner. She had to give the boy credit on making so much preparation for fighting such weak level humans. But then again the new summoner of the bats was weak himself. If he couldn't win this fight against mist, then it would be clear that he isn't worthy of learning anything from her. But if he did she will think about it. Doing so much for the Bat Clan, and even going on to help the Chidoku Clan, the Grand Lady of the Bat Clan, started taking a liking to the Achiha boy. Maybe he could even take back their fallen home. 
She chuckled self-deprecatingly, she wished things were that easy. But if the boy lost this fight, she would be just as disappointed. She would then have to move and finish the last re-aiming weak humans herself, if it went like that. Abito Ichi has shown me why you are worthy. Abito waited with the 20 warriors as time passed. Everyone tried to get some shut eye, the mist won't attack until it was night. Shinobi worked better at the time. Of course, the mist Shinobi sent scouts to check the small and yet empty village. But they didn't find anything unusual, a simple trick of physical Jinjutsu, and they were misled. While well, the sensors were misled thinking the bat's chakra signature for human ones, which they were experts at mimicking. Tamaki was still a bit skeptical of the masked man, Abido. Always told his warriors to keep a close eye on him. But when he sent the animals of the forest to the mist camp, Abido's words came true. They were preparing to slaughter his clan. And it was then the man started to trust the masked man a bit. Tamaki had other reasons for sending a few of his strong warriors with the migrating group. If the masked man wanted to backstab them, then having fighters defend their people would be good. And yet nothing like this was going to happen. Tamaki understood now that the masked man was truly here to save them. And he felt a bit ashamed that he didn't trust him before. It also made him smile a bit that his son had made a good comrade that saved his clan. He knew the reality of war, he had been in one. And yet he still wanted to live. But that is how all humans are, even the ones who turn made from time to time. Abido for his part knew what might be going on in their head. But he was too busy, preparing for the fight. Two high-rankings Jonans weren't that tough, he had been fighting and training under cage-level Shinobis since birth, basically. And yet something told him this fight wouldn't be easy. Abido of course had a few sparing with high-ranking Jonans back in Kanoha, most of them were Chihas. And all the time he lost, which was given, as he couldn't show all of his ability. But even if he did he wasn't confident that he would beat them. High-ranking Jonans were quite rare in a shinobi village. Because only they have the talent to push to the ranks of cages. Even Kanoha for his vast military had only around a hundred high-ranking Jonans. They weren't given ranks in Kanoha unlike in other villages, but everyone knew of their abilities. For example, if Kanon Kakashi was high-ranked Jonan at the start of the series when fighting Itachi. Then Kurenai would be a low to mid Jonan. Even most Anbus were low to mid-level Jonans. And sparing with high-leveled Shinobis were on thing, but a death battle. That had a lot of possibilities for danger. But he was trained by Kagami of the Crow, Red Hot Habanero Kashina, and the Yellow Pervert No I Mean Yellow Flash Minato. Yet the boy was a bit scared scratch that he was terrified. But it didn't make his resolve any less. It was his first all-out battle. And he would prioritize his safety first. He doubles no triple check the barrier seals and the explosive seals he set up. Nightwing and Robin also had set up their part of the work, and now it was the waiting game. Other than his clones he had many other bats that specialized in sneak attacks that were also in the area. But there were no bat elders here. Bad elders were powerful, even more so than Nightwing, being able to use the advanced version of Fear Toxin and other Jutsus. But they were also quite old, and couldn't keep up after they worked so much in creating the new home for Jugo's clan. And the Bat Clan was always about being stealthy, they weren't like the Toads or Snakes. They relied on their hiding skills more. The Beedo also made new Fuinjutsu weapons specifically for this battle. Don't underestimate the prep time of a Fuinjutsu user. He had also inscribed a few more defensive seals on his mask and clothes. Making them a bit heavier. Yet he wasn't worried about the extra weight. Unlike his speed, his body was still fragile. He was only 9, and had a decent amount of muscles. He had tough skin with all the Tajutsu training with Gai, Dai and Yukai. But that won't do shit against powerful ninjutsu. So he was prioritizing his safety. And that meant checking all the things. In Speed Abito had his advanced body flicker, an amalgamation of Soru, Gepo, and the normal body flicker, that was too hard to follow with normal eyes. Abito still remembered the days when he would sprain his ankle in trying to make the jutsu work. And it worked quite fine and safely if Abito opened any gates above the third gate. Abito's mind raced through all the scenarios, and the boy barely slept and ate anything except ration bar or fruits the bats brought him. Actually, he had to force himself to eat, cause in the fights the gates would use a shit ton of energy. And like that time went on and the sky started to bleed red. The day passed, and the sun began to set. Abito looked at the west, his clone sending him memories. 
the mist were coming. He took a deep breath standing up before speaking. Take your formation, we go to war now. The Chudoku clan members nodded, transforming into their beastal state, beforehand. Some were bigger than others, while some had more muscles, while others had more exoskeleton covering them. All of them nodded and started taking position, as they previously planned. Abido had made put chakra nullifying seals on each house, and if one hides in it, it should fool most censors in believing that no one was there. Abido for his part sat in the open, in the middle of the village. His Sharingan activated. But due to his mask other than a black hole nothing else could be seen, not even the redness of his eyes. He nodded to his clones, except Nightwing, Robin, and his other clone, all of them mixed with the ground. Abido gave out a small whistle to signal the bats. They would wait till all of the shinobis were inside the barrier, then put a Jinjutsu, and activate the barrier. The bats that weren't part of his clone squad was also in the ground, waiting to come and spray fear toxin or fire sound jutsu. Abido might be overdoing it with his preparation. But he was just that paranoid. His summon's natural stealth with his sealing formulas, made it all possible. The barrier didn't close of the sky or the earth below, but as far as he knew none of them could fly, and the underground was filled with suicide explosives. It wasn't the same barrier that Orochimaru used against Hiruzen in the canon, for Violet Flame's formation, but was a similar one. This Uzumaki barrier jutsu would be more tough, and would complement his preparation. Clam yourself down, Abido he told himself. Don't chicken out now. You are the ghost of Ichiha, show your worth. He told himself hyping himself up. Yet the tension was still there. The shinobis came, surrounding the village. And it was time to shine. He looked at to his side, it was his Nightwing clone. Nightwing do it. The clone nodded. Make a specific hand sign. Before he said, release. Finally activating the effect of his fear toxins. On the other side. The Kiri Shinobu surrounded the small village. Well, inside the range of the barrier, and yet Abido didn't activate it just yet. Targets are in place, Daki said after sensing the chakra signatures himself. Do it Haruto said to the platoon. The Hazuki and the Mist Anbu teams nodded, and all went through the same hand signs. Actually the whole Anbu team was filled with Hazuki and Yuki, as they complemented each other's ability. Injetsu Mizukij set up this team formation when he was still alive. Hidden Mist Jutsu. And the mist started to rise. Haruto nodded towards Daki as he took out he supported his large broadsword on his shoulder. And the Yuki nodded back. Taking his two swords out. The others also took out their weapons, mostly swords, and kunai. Expect resistance, Daki said as he moved. It's time to earn our keep boys. Haruto said smiling with his shark-like teeth. Before also leading the charge in the silence of the night. Let's do this. But right at the same time, almost all of the mist shinobis started feeling a bit dreadful. As if something bad was going to happen. Even Haruto and Daki felt that. But they just put the feeling to the back of their mind, as shinobis fears were common. They had trained to overcome it before so they didn't put it that much in their mind. A grave mistake that would be regretted later. The mist shinobis slowly moved without making any noises. They pulled out their weapons, entering the small village. The village was small, but it also had some farmlands in the outskirts of the border. And almost all of the clan members lived in the middle part of it, due to fear of attacking animals, or mad beasts. They were a bit surprised that no one was in the front gate of the clan. But then again it was a small village in the middle of the forest, and they didn't get any visitors. So they entered the village using the mist and the darkness of the nights as cover. But once inside, and crossed the farmlands, they noticed something odd. There were no people. And the dreadful feeling started getting more intense. Wait, what do you mean you can't sense any of them anymore? Haruto asked Aki. Daki frowned, not answering. As a sensor, he couldn't feel anyone's presence. The Yuki clan had some natural-born sensors and he was one of them. But just to make sure that he wasn't the only one that didn't pick up anything he looked at the others. Sensors, find them Haruto barked the order. The sensory went through hand seals, and sir there's no one, but the shinobi couldn't finish the sentence. As a rod came out of his mouth, before horizontally split his skull upwards. Peekaboo motherfuckers. The other shinobi stepped away and threw kunais and shuriken at him. But the masked man just laughed as the weapons harmless passed through him. They couldn't believe their eyes, their weapons passed through him. How was that even possible? And just like that he mixed into the shadows disappearing. 
Don't get distracted the enemy knows us, Harido grunted, his odd shark-like tooth visible. I can't sense him Daki called out. Be careful somehow the enemy can hide their presence. But they heard a scream from the south side. One of their shinobis feet got caught from down below, and something super fast charged at him blowing his head off with one punch. The mist shinobis were wide-eyed. And even with all of the mist could see the monster. It was one of the Chidoku clans. It was none other than Tamaki. Fuck why can't things be easy. Haruto said, as he charged at the monstrosity with his huge sword out. But the moment he passed one of the small houses, another transformed monster attacked him from the side. Shit. Haruto said, twisting midair as he blocked the attack with his broadsword. Yet he couldn't counter the strength behind the attack, and he went off like a cannon. One of Abito's clones came out of the ground and took the opportunity to stab the Hazuki. Yet the kunai passed his water body and stuck to it. This wasn't any other Abito's clone. It was Robin. And he smiled under the mask. Boss told me you guys are cockroach so, I made something special for you Hazuki cunts. He blocked the kick that Hazuki sent and jumped back, not before dropping some special smoke bombs. Making a single hand sign. Release. This wasn't any other Abito's clone. It was Robin. And he smiled under the mask. Boss told me you guys are cockroach so, I made something special for you Hazuki cunts. He blocked the kick that Hazuki sent and jumped back, not before dropping some special smoke bombs. Making a single hand sign. Release. Haruto was wide-eyed when he looked down and saw the kunai that was about to explode. He fully transformed his body into a moment's notice, before the kunai exploded like an inferno with electricity. Lighting up the mist shinobi. Robin smiled. You are a tough bastard, he said, a bit annoyed. But it was always the plan to leave you two to boss, but I'm sure boss will like the extra help. With that Robin was gone, trying to find the next target. Similar things were happening all around the mist camp. Every mist shinobi would face off against one chudoki and one of Abido's clones and several bats aiding them. They would get their feet stuck by bats and get explosives thrown at them. A bit later Haruto reformed from his water body. He had a slight wound on his stomach, but other than that he looked fine. That was the key word, he looked fine. But in actual reality, Robin's main target wasn't stabbing him with the thunder-flamed kunai. No it was to make the water man get as much as his fear toxin in his system. And now it was working his charm. The fear toxin took effect immediately. Even though Haruto looked fine, his full body was shivering on the inside, the whole and filled with water, and mist only made it worse. That is what Robin wanted in the first place. To make it easier for Abido to kill him later. Robin and Nightwing added their toxins all over Mist Shinobis food and water. Yet all of them they didn't feel fear right away. It was all due to Nightwing's fear toxin secondary ability. Nightwing like Robin had a secondary ability. It was suppressing his or other bat's fear toxin. It was a very unusable skill at first. But Nightwing made it his own. So what he did was suppress his and Robin's fear toxin in the Mist Shinbone's body. And he right as the fight started releasing it. Because if the Mist Shinobis started feeling fear right away after eating, they might suspect something was going on. So Abido had to use this method. One of the drawbacks is after suppressing the fear toxin for almost a day, the fear toxin lost half of its effect. Even though Nightwing's fear toxin was double as effective as regular ones. So Robin wanted to go dabble all of them mainly the Hazukis with his fear toxin. It would stop them from using their water abilities to the fullest. Your mind missed punk. A two meter humanoid jetted across the battlefield and kicked the Hazuki right in the face. Not bad old man Robin whistled, mind if we work together to beat the water boy up. The transformed monster was Tamaki. And he was a bit surprised why the masked man was speaking like this. But then again there were several of them, meaning this new masked man, Robin, might have been working for the original one, Abido. Tamaki was also amazed that the original masked man had so many followers. He really was helping his clan go through this. In the old clan leader's heart, he felt a bit guilty for suspecting Abido. But that wasn't important, what was important was the person in front. Haruto Hazuki, one of the strong mist shinobis. He would be glad if he could kill a shinobi like before he passed away. Proving that the Chudoku clan isn't easy to peek on. While this was going on. The real Ibido also made his move charging right at the Yuki commander Daki. 
Abido blended into the ground, using his ghost technique, and appeared right next to Daki, who was fighting with one of the Chidoku clan members in his transformed state. Two armament rods came out of his hands he used it stab Daki. Who at the last moment twisted his body, and avoided the strike. Abido didn't slow down either, now that the fight started he didn't need to keep his transformation either. He had his mask on, but cancelled the transformation right in the middle of the battle. It made Daki surprise a bit, and Abido used this chance to stab him in his thigh. Ah Daki grunted. The Chudoku clan member used this as an advantage and punched him in the side. Flicking him away. Hey, he's too strong for you reduce the numbers while I hold him off. Abido said. The Chudoku was bit surprised to see the masked man give him an order. But didn't say much, and changed the target to another Miss Shinobi, who was getting the upper hand on one of his clan members. Abido followed Daki, with his rods out. Nightwing appeared right next to him and also moved with him. Unlike him, his clones could keep the transformation, as their version of the Bat clone was a transformation to begin with. So Nightwing looked like the original Toby, while Abido looked like a chibi version of it. Before the fight in one day, Abido had made each one of his clones his armament gloves and a few thunder-flamed kunais. Which wasn't that hard to make once you know the seals by heart. And he just slapped some thunder seals on his failed flamed kunais, basically making them a better version of the exploding tag with lightning. But that wasn't all. He also had pre-made some special weapons for the upcoming Chunin exams when he was back in Kanoha. Now it seems he will have very good test subjects to try out his new toys. The fight went on, the mist were a bit hesitant and fearful in the fight, making it easy for his clones and the mad clan. Yet only few of them died. If it was only Abido against the mist, Abido would have dumped all of the fear toxins each one of his bats had, including he elders of the clan, and fill the barrier with it. It wouldn't kill those motherfuckers, but it would have made the fight a bit easier. And blow the whole place up with his prepared landmine explosives. But the Chidoku clan was with him, so Abido opted for the next best thing it was coating his rods with his fear toxins. Unlike Haruto, Daki was wearing the standard Anbu mask, and it had a nasty filter that blocked out most things. So he had to use it this way. Of course, it wasn't uncommon for Shinobis to coat their weapons with poisons. And they usually had soldier pills to stop their infection, but fear toxins had no counters. And with each stab, slash or even a scratch, the shinobis would get wobbly on their feet, lose focus and become more fearful of the enemies. But then again the fear toxins doesn't affect the higher class shinobis too much. Unlike Junins or Jenins which Abido experimented on, a Jonin had a lot going after him. A Jonin even in deep fear would carry out his duty, even in massive pain he wouldn't flutter from his goals. That was the reason why the fear toxins only made them a bit slow. But then again if the fear toxins from the bats were that strong. They could have easily took down the snakes to get their home back. But it didn't work that way. But even still, just one mistake was good enough for Abido. Yes it took a lot of preparation, but one mistake from the enemy side was worth that. A mistake from them could be easily be turned into an opportunity for Abido. And Abido coated the rods and gloves with his own fear toxin. Meaning as the fight continues his opponent will start to fear him even more. And this time it wasn't the fear toxin from the bats. But toxins he produced himself after learning it from the bats. A toxin created by a bat summoner was much more fatal to an opponent the summoner was fighting. Of course Abido would take advantage of it. Abido and Nightwing jumped forward towards Daki. The Yuki had risen up and had frozen his wound. It shouldn't nullify the fear toxin, but it would stop it from spreading too much into his bloodstreams. Abido slashed forward, attacking the Yuki with all effort. His Sharingan guiding him to find his weakness and counter his dual-bladed swordsmanship. Nightwing also joined in a moment later fighting with the rods the same way as the Achea. It was a bit difficult for the Yuki. But then again as an experienced John and he could overcome it. It was a bit difficult cause of the difference in height, some attacks would be higher, and some would be lower. And yet the Yuki was keeping up, with them. He was the next candidate for the seven swordsmen of the mist for nothing. Actually, he was holding back trying to judge his opponent's strength. An action that he would regret later. His instincts told him that one of them was behind the whole ambush. So he kept at it. Abido signaled Nightwing. And Nightwing started moving even faster, as he didn't have fear of getting stabbed or slashed. His unusual yet suicidal strikes made Daki in a pinch. 
So he also started to pull out his cards as the air around him started to freeze, thanks to his bloodline ability. It wasn't a jutsu, just pure chakra nature transformation. This also showed how skilled Daki was. If the opponent was going suicidal he would end him. And just as predicted, he pushed two of his swords in Nightwing. Yet nothing happened, even though he felt his sword going through flesh. The Yuki was wide-eyed and ducked at the last minute. Yet a small wound formed above his left eye. Nightwing didn't give any time attacking back to back. So much so that Yuki couldn't tend to his wounds. Only now Daki noticed that he was fighting a bit far from where the main fighting was happening. The enemy was trying to separate him. But he wasn't worried. He was confident in his skill, and that he could overcome the two Shinobis. It was just that he wasn't feeling it right today. The wounds that got inflected were just lucky shots. He didn't mind it that much, even though he was fighting Nightwing, he kept his eye open for Ibido. Actually, Daki was well above a normal Jonin, and added to him being a sensor. The fear toxin wasn't working well against him. If it did then he would be seeing phantom images by now. But he wasn't. When he learned about fear toxins Nightwing told him about this before. Not all people would be affected by the phantom image aspect of the fear toxin. Some were just resistant to it, and after some research, Abido found that natural-born sensors and medical nins were those guys. They would get other effects, such as heightened emotions, rash decision-making, hesitant when fighting, and be fearful of every and all situations. Yet they wouldn't see phantom images. So Daki was one of those guys. More so when you had chakra reserves huge as Daki's. Nightwine and Daki locked themselves in battle. And Abido used this chance to get near him. Daki was prepared for another stab or slash, yet it didn't came. Sound release. Sonic scream. Abido attacked it just near the Yuki. It busted the shinobi's eardrums, making him stagger, and the ice released around his broke off like paper crystal. Nightwing who also was in the range of the sound jutsu, wasn't affected much, having resistance to his own clan's technique. So he took advantage and swiped at Yuki's feet. The missed shinobi was a bit late to take a step back, and a deep wound that almost cut deep inside his sheen appeared. It almost cut his sheen bone off. He would have lost his leg there if he was just one second late. Ah. Aki grunted, kicking Nightwing with his other leg, and throwing one of swords at Abido to gain some distance. He felt the pain and heat radiating form his wound, but Daki as an experienced shinobi took a step back and froze his leg. It stopped the blood flow immediately. And yet the pain and the combined effort thinking of trapping them in his ice release mirrors. No those bastards might have other hidden cards as well. Just five inches deeper and we would be fighting a one-legged chicken. Abido taunted. Miss Chicken. Why don't you freeze your brain also to stop those ears from bleeding? Of course, the Yuki couldn't hear what the Achiha said. But he was getting unusually mad and frustrated at Abido. His emotions ran wild. It shouldn't be the case, and yet it was happening. All due to fear toxins. Let's turn it up a notch. Abido said, gate of opening, gate of healing, gate of life open. Actually, Abido was quite surprised with how well the fight was going on his end. None of the Chudoku clan members died yet, while four of the missed fuckers were already dead. And not to mention the fact that only now Abido was opening his gates. Fighting all his life with speed-based shinbones like Kagami and Minato had boosted his speed quite a lot. Now he could throw hands with a higher-ranking shinobi like Daki. Of course, the Yuki underestimated Abido and Nightwing, and wanted to hide his full power for later or a surprise attack. But Abido got up on him before he could do that. But that didn't mean as a high-ranking shinobi he didn't have any tricks left. Daki also saw Abido's chakra flaring, and started going through hand signs. He would be prepared this time ice release. Demonic ice mirrors. Aki also saw Abido's chakra flaring, and started going through hand signs. He would be prepared this time ice release. Demonic ice mirrors. Large gate-sized mirrors appeared made out of eyes, ten and numbers. Daki jumped back and got into one of the mirrors. While other mirrors were starting to form around Nightwing and Abido. Like I would let you play me Abido jumped up taking in a lung full of air, and using his sonic scream. His eight gates not only boosted his physical tojutsu, but it also boosted some of his ninjutsu. The mirrors where Yuki was hiding shattered, cancelling the whole jutsu. Nightwing moved again like a phantom this time flame kunai with vacuum blades on them. He wasn't fast as Abido with the gates, but he had one card in hand. 
it was not being afraid to go suicidal. Other than ninjutsu all kinds of physical damage would pass through him. And he wanted to milk the advantage before the enemy figured it out. Abido moved in odd ways using his body flicker, Soru and Geppo in combination to bounce in the air with high speed around the Yuki, in odd angles, while his Nightwing clone kept his busy. And attack his blind spots. Daki cursed his bad luck as he was having a hard time countering or dodging Abido's sound release attacks. The Yuki received a few other wounds, but he wouldn't pay much attention to it. As most of them were minor scratches. He would freeze those wounds, but now the fear toxin was getting to him. He started feeling fear, frustration and anger. If he could pull out his ice release. Demonic ice mirrors, he could have easily kept up with the two attackers. But it wasn't his only trump card, enough he said, pooping a chakra pill in and jumping back as he started going through hand signs. Nightwing followed him from the front, while Libido wanted to attack him from the side. But at that exact moment, before both of them could attack the Yuki. He finished his jutsu. Ice style. Ice submergence jutsu. Cold wind started twisting around Daki, before it went outside. Making Abido and Nightwing put up their guard, as the ice attack hit them. The mist around them dropped and the whole village was covered in frost and ice. Only getting blocked by the barrier, not getting outside. On the other side of the battlefield, two people were facing off against a broadsword-wielding shinobi. Robin charged as he took out two thunder-flamed kunais hacking away at the Hazuki, while the mist shinobi was having a hard time dodging Tamaki's punches. Electricity from the thunder-flamed kunai kept him from using his water body ability too much, and Tamaki the mad transformed monster, hit every punch with the grace of the truck. Haruto was having a hard time, because of the fear toxin as well. Showing him random things from time to time, more so because of his higher dose. And unlike Daki he wasn't a sensor, so his eye was the only source of info to track his enemy movements. And that made it even worse Harido knew that whatever smokescreen he was attacked with before poisoned his system. Giving him side effects of illusions, and Robin would also take the chance to cast basic Sharingan Jinjutsu on him. Making him slip up attacks. Harido even with all of the drawbacks kept himself from getting seriously injured. And even was able to inflict damage onto Tamaki. But the man seemed to have infinite regenerative abilities. And the masked man just slipped through his blade. So he just kept up with the fight. Robin on the other hand just smiled underneath his mask. His main target wasn't to kill Harudo, but to soften him up a bit. Each of the thunder-flamed kunai slashes would give him pain, and switch focus away from Tamaki. The old Jidoku leader had an extra ability to steal his opponent's chakra away with each hit. That is why it was always the plan to put him against Haruto to soften the man up, so that it would be easy for Abido to kill him later. Also Robin found it bit disappointing that high jonin level opponent were quite resistant to his clan's fear toxin. Even normal jonins were fine against it. Only making them see small illusions of fear, enhancing their emotions and making them think illogically sometimes. But the most resistant to the fear toxins were medical nins and sensors, who knew the ins and outs of chakra control. That was Abido was having a hard time against Daki, unlike Haruto here. Haruto had a lot of chakra, more than Daki. But in terms of skills Daki was better, and an accomplished sensor at that. There was a reason why out of the seven killed on the mist side only two were Yuki. Most Yukis were sensors, unlike the Hazukis. So they were the easy target to pick up for the Bat clones and the Chidoku clan. But right then and there, a very cold wind blew from the north side, almost frosting the ground beneath the. Robin moved his head away from Haruto to look at that direction. Shit boss is having a hard time keeping up the Yuki bastard. He muttered. Haruto looked softened enough, filled with multiple cuts and some broken bones cause of Tamaki and his teamwork. He was also running half of his chakra reserves. Old man think you can fight him alone? Robin asked, as he kept attacking Haruto. Making the man slip up from time to time. Why? Tamaki grunted. Punching Haruto, who blocked it with his huge broadsword. But one of the drill sockets came out of Tamaki's arm, before going back with full force, throwing the mist shinobi away. Boss might need some help, go then he's my anyway. Tamaki grunted before charging at the mist shinobi yet again. Thanks dude. Keep up with what you're doing smashing and stuff. Robin said, I will try to send other clones you way for help. With that he rushed to Abido's aid. Ice style. Ice submergence jutsu. 
cold wind started twisting around Daki before it went outside. Making Abito and Nightwing put up their guard as the ice attack hit them. The mist around them dropped and the whole village was covered in frost and ice. Only getting blocked by the barrier, not getting outside. Now it's my turn Daki said popping a soldier pill in his mouth as he moved towards the small target, the real Abito. Two swords out, both of them being sub-zero cold as he struck at Abito. The Achiha saw the attack coming, but he wasn't worried one bit. A figure ghosted out of the ground and blocked Daki's attack, kicking him the jaw while he was at it. I'm back boss Robin said, smiling under his mask. Need any help? Yes, that would be appreciated, Abito said, as he broke off from the ice and stabbed at Robin. Daki was wide-eyed when he saw Black Rod getting stabbing him in his stomach. Ah. He jumped back, freezing his wound, but this was getting too much. Now, isn't that cruel boss? Robin said, as he saw the rod coming out of his stomach. Penetrating me from the back like that it was my first time you know. Well, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Abito chuckled as he stepped forward. He should try to find more of loud mouths like Robin, they were quite the stress breakers in this type of stressful situation. Nightwing was just a bit boring. The so-called wound in Robin's stomach disappeared as Abito took out the rod. Tell me are you connected with the snake San and Arachimaru in some way? Daki asked as he held his stomach, panting a bit. He looked over the two, Abito and Robin, but never made eye contact. It was a possibility under the mask he was in Achiha, so he avoided eye contact as per his instincts. None of the wounds on Daki were deep, and he had a lot of stamina, the only reason why he was panting and feeling weak was the cause of the fear toxin. It made it seem as if Abito was stronger than he really was. When in fact it was the opposite. The Achiha was grinning under his mask that he used the fear toxin before the fight. Maybe it was just luck or battle instincts, but the fight would be a lot easier if Abito could put the Yuki in his Sharingan Jinjutsu. He tried it multiple times when he was fighting close quarters against him, but the man never made any eye contact. Not with him or his clones. Well, I doubt that you can hear me well. Abito said, speaking a bit louder. He did burst the man's eardrums, the soldier pill should recover some of his hearing though. But nope I don't know that snake personally it's just that you chose the wrong target at the wrong time this village is under me. And you missed bastards have crossed the line. Daki actually heard what he was saying. Don't think you will win this just because you got first blood the fight just started. He said, readying himself for another fight. But I just have one question. Who are you anyway? Abito smiled underneath his mask. Recovering his chakra with each moment he got. Me well, I'm just your friendly neighborhood Batman. With that, both fighters moved forward. Abito didn't notice it at first, but as Robin and he started fighting the Yuki, it became clear that the mist bastard had gained speed. Abito couldn't figure out why he was so fast was the Yuki holding back too much when he started the fight. No the answer to that question was that after that large scale ice release, the ground became frozen. And the Yuki gained a lot of speed cause of it. It was the same around. The Mist Anbu that were Yuki, were pushing the Chudoku clan his clones back. The Hazukis in the fight weren't contributing much. Out of the nine Mist Bastards that died, only one was a Yuki. It seemed fair, Robin's hydrophobic fear toxin was the greatest counter for Hazuki's ice ability. Fearing your own ability might be one of the stupidest things one could do, yet the fear toxin made it possible. It was all due to Robin's and Nightwing's combined effort. So the Hazakuses were a bit slow on turning their body to water when getting stabbed or punched, or even energy blasted right in the face. And they died because of their hesitation. Abito could have used his sonic roar to shatter the ice field. But he wanted to save his chakra, that technique combined with his gates would reduce his chakra to a dangerous level. His explosion seals worked poorly against ice, maybe he should find a way to make sound-based explosion seals that could work. Huh, more research for the future. He mused as he kept up the sword fight the Yuki. The Sharingan was the swordsman's worst nightmare. Abito clearly lacked the skill with swords, but with his Sharingan, he could keep up with the ice boy easily. Heck, he even started copying some of his moves. Abito seeing the fight going nowhere, jumped back. Cover me Robin. Aye aye boss. Robin said, as he moved fast. Attacking fast and without any fear the Yuki had guessed that ninjutsu might work on them. But like all shinobis, he had to perform hand seals with both hands to use his it. 
And Robin of course kept him busy from doing any of that. While the Yuki was counting the clone strike, he also kept his eye for another attack. His speed was quite fast on ice, but that didn't mean he was out of danger. He needed help dealing with these two. Where is Haruto when you need him he thought. Suddenly dozen of shuriken were thrown at Daki and Robin. And the Yuki had to go for a retreat while the clone followed him with no fear. It also made him lose track of Ibido. He countered Robin's blade, swinging it horizontally, decapitating his head. Yet the separated body still attacked him. He had to kick it back to gain some breathing room. But it was then something caught his feet. He couldn't move. He looked down, and sure enough his shadow was connected to the small masked man. Is he an R? I thought he was an Ichiha with how he was copying my sword. But whoever he is connected to Kanoha somehow, or he wouldn't be able to use it Daki for his part, wasn't worried that he got caught in the shadow position. There was already some help coming his way. You are out now Abido was wide-eyed when he felt a presence right behind him, and ducked missing the broadsword by an inch. And yet one kick sent him away flying. You are out now Abido was wide-eyed when he felt a presence right behind him, and ducked. And yet one kick sent him away. You look like you needed help, Haruto said, sweating a bit. He tried to hide it, but it was hard using his abilities so much. You don't look so good. Daki pointed out, had a tough fight. The Yuki knew Haruto from childhood, getting trained by the same sensei. And actually could consider each other their friend. A rare thing in the mist. Haruto barked a laugh, looking over Daki's wounds. Well, you look like shit as well. While all of the mist shinobis got affected by Robin's fear toxin. Only Hazuki's in the group was having a problem. The Yuki also gained a good amount of hydrophobia, but freezing the water removed the fear. It was odd in a way, but if Robin's fear toxin worked only with liquid water. Ice was water, but for some reason, it didn't gain the fear aspect of it. Kind of like the human body is 70% water, it didn't mean people would start fearing their own bodies. Abito rolled back to the ground before Nightwing caught him. Where were you he grunted, standing up. Nightwing whispered something in his ears before the clone again ghosted into the ground. Just make it work Abito mumbled before standing up again. Robin it's only you and me pal. Let's give it all. The Robin clone appeared at his side and nodded. Abito took out four flamed kunai, but these ones a bit different. Looked more complicated than his usual kunai swell, time to use the big guns. He tossed two to Robin who caught it with interest. Abido flicked the two kunais to the side, as two wind blades like the vacuum blades came out from the side. Robin grinned copying Abido's action. Seeing this Haruto and Daki didn't make any move. They were also winded a bit, they were trying to catch a breath or two. Even though the fight didn't go on for long they were confused themselves why their bodies were acting this way. But none of the mist shinobis said anything to each other. Unlike Kanoha, where friendship and brotherhood was encouraged. The mist had a different policy of not showing any weakness, not even to your allies. A fatal flaw that disrupted the trust between each other. And now they are suffering for it. After a while, all four of them moved at the same time. Abido using his speed against Daki's eye-style swordsmanship, while Robin was holding against the large bald user Haruto Hazuki. The fight wasn't quite even, and the longer it went, it became clear that the mist was getting an upper hand on them. But that was the plan from the very beginning. There was a difference between high-level jonins to your normal jonins. Even with how cliché it sounded, their power level and skills scratched the surface of lower cages. Only unique jutsus or chakra reserves held them back from getting there. Also, they came here to kill a cage-level shinobi like Rachimaru. of course, it would be tough for Abido to kill them with his current skills. Even with the preparations he made. Even though the fight was going to Daki and Haruto, they were moving to a place where Abido wanted. An area where there were there was a lot of landmine explosives. An extra padding of it. When Daki and Haruto were just where he wanted, Abido gave the signal. Fall back. They are too strong for us. Abido said, jumping back using Geppo to rise to the sky where the enemy couldn't follow. Robin also turned to bats and started going up. How the fuck can he fly I thought we were fighting Kanoha bitches, not stone bastards. Haruto grunted. And stupidly enough, both the mist shinobis didn't move from the spot. Making it easy for Abido to release the explosion seals that were around them. The first one to pick up was Daki, being a sensor he looked down and saw almost 200 meters around them were lighting up. 
The distance was too much flash by with the standard body flicker. Fuck. Harito cursed when he also it happening. But it was too late. And with that a massive explosion was ensured. Shaking the ground and lighting up the sky. Even the barrier around the village became visible for a second. Abito who was keeping himself up in the air using Geppo, observed all of it with his Sharingan and his glitch vision. The fight wasn't over, it wasn't even close. Abito also didn't miss the opportunity to get some few recovery breaths in, while he was out of combat. When the dust and smoke cleared both the Achiha and his summon saw a large piece of ice in the middle. Of course, the Yuki would use the ice to cover him and his comrade. But that didn't mean Abito would wait for him to come out. With Geppo Abito moved, like a bouncing ball, in the air. And Robin also followed, when they were both in the opposite sides of the ice, they made the exact same seals. Shidaki was wide-eyed. Shatter he tried to throw the surrounding ice to attack Abito and his clones with ice shards. But it was too late, sound release. Sonic Roar. Both Abito and Robin said at the same time. And the Sonic Roar hit him like a train from both sides. Crushing the ice-like glass and shaking up both of the shinobis that were inside. Aki who was a bit prepared grabbed Haruto, and they quickly retreated. Trying to get away from Abito and his clone, before they stopped when he saw both Abito and his clone falling to the ground in their knees. Blood coming out of Abito's mask. The mist shinobis couldn't hear shit, but they nodded to each other. It seemed whatever jutsu that the mask shinobis used left them dry. And even with hazy vision and dizzy head, they attacked both. But rather than getting close to them, they opted for a long-range attack. Ice style. Demonic ice shards. Water style. Water pressure jutsu. The Yuki tried to hit Robin, while the Hazuki aimed for Abito. Abito and Robin rolled to the side. Going opposite to not get hit. While Robin ran in a zigzag pattern, Abito wanted to go a little bit closer. A little more right there. Abito smiled inwardly, Sharingan Jinjutsu. Just when Haruto made the mistake of making eye contact, Abito put him under a small Jinjutsu to mess with his sense of time, to make things more slowly to him. Haruto suddenly felt something thrown him way, and the man turned around quickly and caught the thing that was thrown at them. It was one of the missed shinobis. Oh you watch yourself. Haruto grunted before he looked at the man's eyes. They were oddly red. Haruto get away from him. Daki shouted with wide eyes, jumping back. But it was too late, and Haruto was just a bit slow. The person started to bulk up quickly, before exploding right in Haruto's face before he could leave. The person also had some explosive tags on him, making it a chain explosion. Haruto should have been alright using his water body to avoid the explosion. And yet it didn't happen, due to the Jinjutsu and the fear toxin. Slowing him down tremendously. Rather the man was thrown away by the explosion, losing one arm, from the elbow down as he fell like a rag doll. Nice one, Nightwing, Abito muttered, smiling weakly. The Jinjutsu worked like a charm, but it took quite the chunk of chakra. He focused more on recovering his chakra. With his glitch vision he could see that the damage was fatal to the Hazuki. One down two to go Nightwing popped by his side to guard Abito somewhat so that the Achiha could recover his chakra. No Daki was surprised even more seeing this, and quickly made his way toward Haruto. Haruto you bastard don't die like this. He looked back at the enemy, but they were recuperating themselves. Both Shinobi's ears still ringed, but they could read each other's lips. The Hazuki panted slowly, I don't know what's wrong with me today, duck. He said, I know it's taboo to show weakness and all of that, but would you believe me that today I was afraid afraid of the enemies, afraid of losing my life, and even afraid of my own water abilities. The man chuckled, making Daki's eyes widen, while the gears in his head were turning. Yeah I can practically hear the gears in your head turning they might have drugged us somehow. But it seems that we of the Hazuki clan are getting more affected by it than anyone else. We can't win like this Daki. I can't summon my clam and I don't think I can use it anyway. You have to use the item. I will create one last cover for you, before I go. Aki knew what his friend was saying, and also knew that Haruto wouldn't make it. And the item he was speaking of Haruto, painfully took it out of his hand guard. A small glass container filled with clear liquid, it almost looked like water. This liquid was their main trump card. The liquid that when ingested would boost the user's chakra by two to three times, and shorten their lifespan drastically. Most don't make it out alive or those who do get their lifespan cut by half. 
The second Mizuki Jinjetsu Hazuki, used it multiple times against Mew in the Second War, and was able to fight off Mew and other powerful stone shinobi for days before dying. Only the Hazuki clan who were the summoner of the giant clam clan, could get this water after he was deemed worthy. It was always the plan to kill the snake San in using it. The Hazuki would use this item to gain the upper hand with his large-scale water Jutsus and Daki, and his squad would use their ice release to freeze him to death. Yet nothing like that would happen. Daki clicked his tongue and nodded. Even though others might have not noticed it, but he clearly saw the barrier that encased the village when he used his mass ice release. And there was no way to retreat from this fight. So this was the only way. An unknown enemy like this could attack the village next, and he would rather die letting him go like this. Even if it killed him. Aruto smiled, getting up with the support of his friend. Let's go out with a boom baby. Daki looked at the liquid container in his hand. And sure enough, he felt fear radiating from it. It might be whatever position the enemy used or it might be the water itself. He didn't know. But rather than overthink about it, he popped the liquid in, even with how fearful of water he was. Abido who somewhat recovered his chakra was wide-eyed when he saw the Yuki's chakra flaring up. What the fuck is that? Robin from his side cursed. As a member of the Bat Clan of course he would sense it as well. Did he just recover all his chakra like that, and it's still going up was that even possible? Abido clicked his tongue that was not expected. But the two missed Shinobis weren't done. The injured Hazuki stood up, made one hand sign, and gathered all of his chakra at once. Abido was wide-eyed again. Fuck, move to the sky. He's going to bring down a fucking tsunami. Abido called out in a loud enough voice that his clones could hear him. Water style. Great submerging wave. The half-dead Hazuki said, before spouting out the large body of water. Water style. Great submerging wave. The half-dead Hazuki said, before spouting out the large body of water. All of his clones knew how to fly, even without Geppo. So they grabbed the nearest Judoki clan member and took to the sky. But some of them didn't make it. And got dragged to the water. The water was so much that it was only stopped by the barrier around it. Ice style. Ice age. And just like that, the whole body of water turned into ice in an instant. Even freezing some of the members of the Chudoku clan in the process. The Mist Shinobis on the other hand didn't get affected at all. The Hazuki clan members just liquefied their bodies out of the ice, while the Yuki just phased through the ice itself. The Mist of course took the chance to attack the frozen Chudoku clan members. Fatally wounding some of them in the process. In just one move the whole battle shifted from one side to the other. Abido clicked his tongue. The Hazuki was dead, and yet did something that made the situation worse. And to top it all off, the ice made it so that his last resort won't work. Abido had planted a shit ton of explosion seals in the ground, and if he thought that the fight was out of his favor, he would use it to blow the whole place up after getting out of the barrier. Yet because of the massive ice, most of the explosion seals were now damaged, and wouldn't do any significant damage cause of the ice layer. Fuck. This couldn't get any worse. Abido grumbled. I will kill you Daki shot out of the ice with two huge ice lances in his hand. Boss you spoke too soon. Robin said. Well he went forward, making a single hand sign before using the sonic scream on the upcoming enemy. The sonic scream broke the ice lances, and halted the Yuki midair. Abido didn't remain there as he started bouncing in the air before going past Robin. Nightwing also phased out of the ground to attack from behind. But just as both of them got near the ice man. His chakra exploded outwards. It threw Abido and Nightwing off as they met the ground, ice cracking beneath them. Nightwing couldn't phase through the attack, because of having ice element in it, and his clone got dispersed. He would take some time to reform, but the ice did damage the four bats that made the Nightwing clone. Abido on the other hand didn't look too good. Ow 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 did I break my fucking back. The Ichihahistas tried to get up and gauge his injury. No, but I did break my right shoulder blade fuck it hurts. There was no time for medical ninjutsu as Daki used his ice release summon chunks of ice jumping on them, as he got close to Abido and attack from the sky. Fuck it seems that whatever the Yuki took, it boosted his natural ice element to mastery. And was he really trying to copy his own moves? Abido was also kinda pissed that he got hurt fighting against a higher ranked Jonin. But then again whatever shit the Jonin took brought his level to a low cage, so he wasn't complaining that much. 
So that's what the mist planned on using against Orochimaru. But I don't see the snake struggling the ice princess right here so he shouldn't either. His target was to kill the snake one day, and Mr. Elsa here wouldn't stop him in his way. What's the rush big guy Abito said, going through one-handed hand signs, while the other had produced small armament nibbles from his glove. As Daki got near Abito kept a close eye with his Sharingan, to predict his next move. You should cool off a bit. Die the mist shinobi said, half mad in his state, as he threw ice shards at Abito. The Ichi had used his advanced body flicker, dodging them. Rolling forward just when Daki came down with an ice hammer. It seems that basic ice release jutsu didn't even require hand signs for the Yuki anymore, how was that fair? Abito waited holding his jutsu in, as he took the fight to the sky. The Yuki trying to follow him upwards. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. Abito released the massive fireballs below him from where Daki was coming from. But of course, that wasn't all. The Yuki went through hand signs of his own, summoning large blue ice mirrors to block the attack. Of course, Abito could easily see through the fire with his advanced glitch vision. And just what Abito wanted, he used this chance to use Sonic Scream. Sound being a sub-element of air, mixed very well with Abito's flames, and a beam of fire double the speed hit the ice mirror, shattering it into pieces. But he wasn't done yet, Abito flicked his other hand, and hundreds of armament senbens were launched at the Yuki. The Yuki didn't have to time to make another defense, so he flared his ice chakra pushing it away. It was just as powerful as the other time, even putting the giant fireball off. But it didn't reach Abito. Abito who was above him saw it. Fuck, this will suck. But right there, just for a few seconds Daki lost his powers and hit the ground. But the Yuki got up just as quickly, recovering his chakra. Whom whatever the bastard took is in keeping him stable. And any time he uses the ice burst attack from his body, he gets weak. Abito thought as he dived down a bit far from Daki. He also needed to recover his own chakra. I will have to use any and all chances if I want to beat him also, it's a shitty situation, but did the Yuki gain regenerative abilities? Fuck me sideways. Now that most of the clothes on the Yuki's body was damaged, he could see that the wounds on the man's body were fixing themselves. This was going to be tough he didn't sign up to fight some ice zombies here. Abito did gain wounds in the fight, but other than his shoulder injury that was now fixed. He was relatively fine, most wounds were only flesh wounds that he could fix later, and he wanted to test his strength as well. It was sad, but without his clones Abito wasn't confident in beating him. Daki didn't attack immediately, he panted a bit. The extra chakra was running through his chakra coils driving him mad, but he was trying his best to compose himself. Not only did the special water from his late friend boost his chakra, but it also gave him a temporary regenerative ability, fixing most of his wounds in the process. Abito didn't see himself winning unless he went all out. And so he did. Huh, and here I thought you went through some powerful transformation or something, Abito smirked as he speed up towards the Yuki. But it just planes on Miss Shinobi throwing an anger tantrum. But you ain't the only one that can power up. Gate of limit open. The Achiha boosted his speed even more. And even with all of that power Daki's eye couldn't keep up with Abito's speed. But as a skilled swordsman and a sensor, he didn't need his eyes. He countered all of the Achiha's blows with his ice-made sword, sparks and snowflakes flying in the air as they fought. You think you can beat me Daki grunted, I will kill you. Daki was usually the clam type, but the water was driving him mad. And that was why he was acting hot-headed and rashly. Abito on his end misjudged Yuki's ability. By his calculations, he shouldn't be able to keep up with Abito's fifth gate, even with the added power-up. Yet he was not only keeping up but overpowering him in the process. What the Ichiha didn't know was the fear toxins were too effective in holding off his enemy's strength, but now it wasn't working properly. But he also had his trusty backup. Robin and Nightwing also joined and when they saw this, the bat clones had a lot of advantages, but it also had one drawback, and that was the bats couldn't use all of the jutsus Abito could. And the eight gates were one of the jutsus that the bats couldn't mimic. But that didn't hold them off too much, as they didn't fear getting hit by physical weapons. Only the ice jutsu of the Yuki hurt them a bit. But when in close quarters, the Yuki couldn't use his powerful ice release jutsus to freeze them. So they were relatively safe there. The clones would take their time, helping Abito, or holding the Yuki off when Abito retreated to get some breathing air. 
it was an odd process. But the eight gates ran on the user's stamina. And after so many years of researching and practicing medical ninjutsu, Abito found the easiest way to tackle that. He would just transform his chakra to his stamina. So with each chance, Abito would get, he would fall back and let Nightwing and Robin fight the Mad Yuki. And use the recovery breathing to gain the chakra back, gulp down a few ration bars, and hit himself with the medical ninjutsu to recover his stamina. It would also stop any small wounds from getting any worse, and fix others. Heck, he only had ideas on trying on this mad approach, yet this shit was working in his real life. This was like using infinite reusable energy his body would punish him later though. Also, Abito was quite confused as to why he couldn't put the Yuki in his Sharingan Jinjutsu, like he did with Haruto. After a lot of practice, he could use his basic Sharingan Jinjutsu with his fifth gate activated. And now that the Yuki was mad at him, he had made eye contact many times by mistake, and yet he failed to put him under. Well, the Mist Shinobi's chakra was spiking up and down anyways, maybe that was why he couldn't put him in. But that didn't mean Abito didn't hurt Daki multiple stab wounds, and slashes were inflected. Yet all of them reattached right before his eyes. A liquid like tendrils would come out of any fresh wound and fix it. Even with all of that power Daki only felt one emotion. And that was the intent to kill. It was so much that it subjugated any fear that he had. He felt like he could do anything kill anyone. And he had his target. For whatever reason, the short mask shinobi always gave orders to the bigger one. And he didn't see him phase through his attack like the others. So his instincts told him that killing him would solve all the problems. And he was right. He could see the smaller mask shinobi get wounds on his body as well, unlike the other two. So Daki waited for the perfect timing, gathering his chakra and flaring it upright in the mask shinobi's face. An ice explosion occurred. And Abito was thrown back to one side, while Nightwing and Robin were thrown the other way. But Daki didn't follow Abito no, he took the chance to go through few hand signs. Ice style. Demonic freeze flames. With that the, Yuki spouted blue looking flames at Nightwing and Robin. Abito was wide eyed. No both of his clones got frozen solid in ice. And the Yuki took his feet up to break it. That would kill his bats. The Ichiha's body moved on his own, spraining his ankle he moved like a beast, tackling the mist shinobi before he could break the ice. Abidos felt a punch on his jaw, as both he and the mist shinobi separated. It broke off his mask, and dislocated his jaw in the same time. What you are a kid. Daki noted when he could finally see the red Sharingan. And Ichiha at that ya, yeah, so what? Gonna touch me like your uncle touched you when you were lil. Abito spat, and it angered Daki even more. Daki could actually hear now due to the special water, recovering his hearing. But this wasn't the sort of thing he wanted to hear. But hey mister sorry to say, I'm not into that stuff, and now that you have seen my face I can't let you live either. The oh ho sucks to be you. Why you Daki grunted the ravaging chakra taking over his emotions as he shot at Abito. Fine, you asked for it asshole. My body's gonna kill me after this Abito grunted. There was no way he would be able to handle the Yuki without his Nightwing and Robin clones backup. The other clones are too far as well to call for. Six gate of view open. Green chakra thick enough for anyone to see flashed out of Abito's body. The power that emanates from him was enough to display surrounding bodies of water. The Ichiha's body was on fire the boost up was massive compared to the other gates, and his Sharingan was having a hard time with managing the new gate. Abito never used this gate yet. Each time Abito would use a gate, his Sharingan would need time to adjust with the high blood pressure and chakra. It would get fixed after using the same gate for a while. But the sixth gate was just too much, so he had to shut off his Sharingan this time. Actually Abito didn't want to go this far in using his abilities. It would tax him later, but Abito noticed something odd, the longer the fight went the stronger the Yuki was getting. It wasn't just his chakra that was expanding in size his strength as well, even his speed. So Abito wanted to go all out and kill the bastard before he became a nuisance. A decision that Abito would regret not making sooner. Aki came like a bullet, using the icy ground to his advantage, yet Abito was faster this time. The Achiha appeared right before the Yuki punching him in the gut. The man blocked it in time, but he heard cracking noises coming out of his bones. Before he got shot off. The armament gloves from now on would be mostly used as punching gloves. 
it takes a lot of concentration to keep up with the sixth gate, and making armament spikes was also quite taxing. And stabbing and slashing working against the mist bastard anyway. Fuckabito grunted, feeling his joint scream in pain cause own attack. Abito made one hand sign and grabbed the back of his neck. I hope it's worth the risk. Green light emitted from Abito's hand that was on his neck. It was a simple medical jutsu that would reduce the pain multiple folds. But would bring it all back later. That's why he didn't want to use it. But there was no other way. After the jutsu, Abito started to feel less pain. Now he was ready. You can get back from stabs and slashes, let's try the old punching you to oblivion method. Abito followed through, his speed was so much, that it started to generate flames each time he used his advanced body flicker to bounce in air. Advanced body flicker. Combination of the normal body flicker with Soru and Geppo. And the speed of the six gate was enough to generate flames. But with each step, Abito could feel his muscle fibers get micro tears. Each punch and kick would also give small cracks to his bones. There was a reason why Mike Dai forbid Abito from using the six gate before 13. His small body even with how much training he did wouldn't be able to handle it. Yet he was able to keep up with it. But not for long, he needed to finish the fight quick or he would die. Abito moved like a mad beast, punching and kicking the shit out of the Yuki. While the Mist Shinobi could just block with little success, getting his bones broken with each attack. Even with the added regenerative abilities, he wasn't able to keep up with the damage that Abito was putting him through. Enough. Aki shouted, ducking a horizontal kick, while blocking the front kick with his left arm. His arm broke like a twig in the process. But it gave him the opportunity to stab Abito right in the leg, before giving back a kick of his own. Throwing the Achiha away. Abito would have easily seen the attack coming if his Sharingan was active. But it wasn't. Abito cursed the Mist Shinobi taking steps back, quickly taking out the kunai from his feet. But before he could perform the medical ninjutsu necessary to recover. Daki came in like a jet with two ice lances in his hands. His left arm was still broken, but the man had frozen it, rather than letting his body recover and attack Abito. He was just that desperate. Abito's wouldn't be able to keep up his speed with his injured leg. So he took out his special flamed kunais, and sprouting wind blades on each side, as he engaged the mist shinobi in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Wind blade and ice lance going against each other. I'm impressed boy, that you are able to keep up with me. Daki spat. But that won't save you for long. And I will claim those eyes of your after killing you. I'm impressed boy, that you are able to keep up with me. Daki spat. But that won't save you for long. And I will claim those eyes of your after killing you. Yeah, I'm also impressed that I can keep up with a crackhead like you. Abito shot back, having a nasty grin on his face. What did you dead water boy give you before he died? His coom. He knocked you up with his power, didn't he? Daki didn't speak, but the anger was visible on his face. Both of them at the same time locked the blade with each other, and Daki being bigger was able to push the Ichiha off a bit. I will have your tongue boy. I thought you wanted my eyes. Abito grunted, for all honesty, he was enjoying his mortal enemy. Was he paving his way to becoming a battle maniac? Don't overestimate yourself boy he said as he counter another strike from the Achiha. But I have to say, it's sad that a talent like you will never see the daylight again. Yeah, well aren't you just proud keeping up with a nine year old like me? That's what you missed bastards are into I. But that both of them locked blades, and it was a battle of strength now. Daki pushed Abito even more, making the boy kneel. Uy Abito twisted and tapped his special flamed kune side, and fire blazed off, mixing with his wind release. And Abito who was face to face with Daki, screamed a sonic scream right at the man's face. A pillar of fire and wind hitting right in his face. Ah the man was flung back, losing most of his face to the fire. Yet the regeneration kept him alive. I will what say that to my face motherficker. Abito grinned rolling forward as he tried to get the killing blow. He slashed both of his blades horizontally, trying to decapitate the man before the weird regenerative shit happened again. New. The man burst out his chakra all at once. This time it was way stronger than before. Abito was hit by the full force as he got frozen stiff before he got thrown away. It would have killed Abito if he didn't have his sixth gate opened. The heat of his supercharged blood pressure made it so that he wouldn't be frozen to the bones. But that didn't mean he could move. 
Far from it the Acha could barely keep himself conscious. The ice was layering his skin and made it even worse. I'll kill you an inhuman voice said. When Abito looked he was kinda shocked by how Daki looked. There was no skin on his face, and it was visible that some of the flesh was trying to grow over his skull. But that wasn't all, the Yuki's whole body didn't look human no, he looked like an ice man. It wasn't just his face, almost any skin that was in his upper body was blown away, revealing blue ice-like stone that had now replaced his flesh and blood. The man looked like a freaking ice zombie for crying out loud. An ice lance formed on his hand as he made his way toward Abito. Move move you damn body. Abito cursed himself, he was barely conscious. And his body wouldn't respond. Will I die like this? No I want. I want. With that Abito tired to flare up his chakra inside of his body, tiring to change the natural nature of chakra to fire. This would kill any normal person. There was a reason why chakra was changed outside the body to their respective element. But Abito found no other way if he could flare up his chakra with fire nature, maybe he could get the ice of it. But as he tried he only encountered pain from his chakra coils. Yet he kept at it the Yuki was slowly waking up to him. No he wouldn't die like that. He refused to die like this. Abito was barely breathing, and his instincts took over changing his breathing pattern that was more fit for cold. The Yuki came close the frozen Acheha, he didn't have his eyes. They were still growing back in his skull. But he was a sensor he only regretted not seeing the terrified expression on the brat's face, as he would stab the ice lance right in his heart. He knew his body won't hold up anymore. So the least he could do is kill the brat with him. But just as he was about to thrust the ice spike in, Abito moved his body to the side, the ice lance missing the heart by a few inches. Abito moved his hand, crushing the ice spear with his bare hands. How are you, but the Yuki didn't get to finish his sentence as a hand grabbed him by the face. Slamming him down on the ground. Almost knowing the sense out of him. How are you, but the Yuki didn't get to finish his sentence as a hand grabbed him by the face. Slamming him down on the ground. Almost knowing the sense out of him. But the Achiha wasn't finished. With stupidly insane speed Abito dragged his opponent by the face, dragging him on the ice ground, before smashing him to the barrier. Shaking the whole structure. Abito brought back his other fist, still grabbing his opponent by the face, and thrust his hand and right in the stomach. The man coughed blood, but Abito didn't let go. In fact, he started to pull. Ripping off the man's head from his shoulder his spine still attached to it. Abito threw the head away and roared an inhuman roar. Any fighters, be it the Mist Shinbones or Chudoku that were left were wide-eyed at what happened. They were even more shocked at what was happening to the Acheha. Abito didn't look human anymore. Vines covered most of his body, the blood inside was running wild in the Acheha's body, and it made it steam out sweat or even the ice that he was standing on. It didn't last long though, after a few seconds, Abito dropped to the ground his body still steaming like he was boiled from inside out. Abito's clones were even more surprising about what was happening. But unlike the others, they took the chance to kill any remaining Mist Shinobi. The Mist Shinobi's morale were downed even more when they saw the two of their best Shinobis dying. But they kept fighting for the last struggle. A few of his bats immediately went to Abito. What the fuck happened to boss? Robin asked in his clone form. Another perk of using the bat clone Jutsu was it could stay even after the user got knocked out. I don't know Nightwing said, before turning to the other clones and bats were there. Those who know medical ninjutsu help me we need to return his vitality to normal, before we can even think of repairing any damage. The bats and the clones came. Trying to help the injured Acheha. Yet it was too slow. But the boss doesn't have any serious damage. The six gates messed up his muscles and insides, but they aren't even that fatal. But why is he still smoking hot like a pipe? Robin was confused, looking to his side. They didn't know if it was good or bad. Abito was still red hot, normal people would get their hands burned just by touching him. Nightwing isn't the grand lady around here she might be able to do something. Other than some small wounds Abito didn't receive any injuries. But getting put in ice also affected the boy, and when Abito wanted to defreeze himself with fire release chakra, he also damaged his chakra coils a bit. Also pushing himself to use the six gate was also quite straining for the Acheha. So the bats were quite worried about it. Nightwing and Robin for their part felt guilt, because if they were a little bit stronger, this wouldn't have happened. 
Even more so when even with their first aid, Abito was still steaming hot. The water around him evaporating. The Nightwing clone clicked his tongue. There seems to be no other way he was about to leave, maybe if he begged the old lady she might help. Hey one of the Chidoku clan members that had lost an arm and were barely alive, came to Abito's side. It was none other than Tamaki, that barely survived the battle with Haruto. Let me help with that. Nightwing and Robin looked at the newcomer. Before agreeing. The bats were a bit reluctant. But they knew the Chudoku clan's secret medical ninjutsu, so they let him. But chief if you use that technique you will. The other remaining members of the clan wanted to stop their chief, but he wanted to do this. Tamaki chuckled, coughing a bit. I will die today anyway that missed bastard did a lot of damage. So don't stop me from doing anything I am no longer your leader. My son is and let me at least repay my favor to the one that saved my clan. His injuries were too serious anyway, he would die later if he didn't today. But at least he wanted to give his last thanks to the savior of his clan. Tamaki looked at the clones, I don't see any injuries on the boy. But I will try to cool the boy down with my abilities. I will merge my cells with his and try to even out the temperature and his chakra issues. The bats nodded, and Tamaki started the process. The Chudoku clan before the Shinobi Wars were always visited for their unusual medical skills. And Tamaki would gladly help his savior. And the old man had sustained so many injuries that he would die anyway, better to die like this helping a friend rather than dying in bed. The others in the clan just had tears running down there seeing their leader make the sacrifice. But they resolved themselves. Their former clan leader truly was a man amongst men. And he would be remembered as that. Out of the 20 Chidoku clan only 8 of them survived. Most of them died after the whole ground was submerged in water and turned to ice. The Mist Shinobis took the chance to reduce their numbers. But they were just happy that they won the small skirmish and made it out alive and victorious. Almost all of them had a deep respect for the man that saved their lives. But they were surprised at the same time that their savior looked like a kid. It was strange. But most of them didn't think of it too much. Appearances could be deceiving, maybe he just looked younger than he was. There were other weirder things in the world. The Bats and Chudoku clan watched as Tamaki started pumping Chakra into Abito, after his hand half merged with him. And the boy's stature started getting better. Red color started going away from Abito's pale face, returning to a healthy pink. But Tamaki couldn't keep up anymore. And Tamaki drew his last breath, dropping to the ground. Tamaki-san one of the Chidoku clan members supported his fallen leader. He was also one of Tamaki's friends that stayed for the way. It seems that you have got your wish dying in the forest just like your wife. Tamaki smiled, coughing a bit. It seems so with that, the man closed his eyes never opening them again. Reporting back from the mission. Abito smiled cheekily as he tossed the scroll towards Hirazan. The man with the hat caught it with a raised eyebrow. You know I gave you a week off only and you are late. But it was two days, and it's not like I am a kid or anything. Hirazan squinted. Boy, you are not even ten. Sometimes I forget you are the same age as Asuma. He sighed, shaking his head. I was about to send Kagami or Minato to find you another day, and that might have happened. Missing in action. And not to mention the Achiha clan shenanigans I have to deal with later anyway, prepare yourself to be punished for being late. But, that's. But the Hokage cut him off. You are going to do D rank for the next week while keeping up with Minato's training. I don't want you to be slacking off for the upcoming Chunin exams. Hey, that's mean old man. Abito pouted. Just wait till I get that hat and become the Hokage I will be the one giving D ranks to you then. Hirazin chuckled, dragging his pipe. Oh, already having dreams on taking the hat from me, then you need to be disciplined even more, if I want to entrust the village to you, you know what I will handpick the deer rank missions myself. Don't want them to hog all of your time one week in the Inuzuka litter cleaning duty sounds fine. Their cleaning duty are worth deer ranks abito paled a bit, taking a step back. You wouldn't oh, I will, Hirazin said before he took out a particular scroll with the Inuzuka logo on it, and put a stamp on it. He tossed it to the Achiha, who caught it with a grim expression, and I did. Now go along shoo shoo I have to work to do. Fine. Abito whined as he exited the Hokage's office. Well, this sucks Abito walked outside as his expression changed to neutral. It's been three days since his fight with the mist. 
And he was fully back to health now actually whatever the late Chidoku clan leader did took away all of the damage in his body. It's sad that he couldn't thank him for it. The man did Abito a huge favor in healing him, and he died early in the process. But then again the injuries that he suffered from Haruto Saijetsu was quite dreadful. Abito would look after the Chidoku clan anyway, but because of this, he would do his all to make sure nothing happened to them. As Abito walked the streets of Kanoha it bugged him, the new nightmares. It was funny actually, never did Abito imagine he would have bad dreams after getting through Anbu and Bat Clan fear toxin training. Yet he did. Basic human trauma he supposed. He would still find himself in his dreams, stuck in ice, his body frozen solid and a giant ice monstrosity, making its way to stab him with an ice lance. He would then feel his body heat up, an excruciating pain coming from it, before he would burst like a balloon. Dying over and over again. For the last two days, he couldn't sleep a minute without having those dreams. Takra had quite the nasty effect to numbing down sleep meds, so they didn't work any better either. He would still get nightmares. It wasn't the usual Sharingan memory repeating dreams either. Sharingan had the skill of memorizing anything after watching it for a moment, so after cruel death battles, the user of the eyes would find himself in those memories repeating dreams. Many of his clan members suffered from it, some were even driven insane, cause of it. Now nothing like that happened because of the new Yamanaka treatment that happened in Kanoha on their veterans. Anyway, Abito didn't have the Sharingan memory repeating dreams, he didn't have his eyes active when the incident happened. It was just plain old trauma and PTSD. This could be easily fixed if Abito visited a Yamanaka clinic, yet he wasn't stupid enough to do it. I will find a way to fix it later, but that wasn't the main concern, Abito had fucked up in with the fighting of the mist. If he was just a little bit careful maybe he could have ended the fight sooner. Yet he didn't. He should have been more careful. He was just lucky that things worked out in his favor, he learned a key lesson that day to never underestimate your enemy, until you are sure they are fully dead. Abito was also kinda confused as to how he won the battle, so Nightwing showed him. Nightwing had shown him what happened after he got frozen, with his Katsuryagen Jinjutsu. And Abito was dumbfounded. Talk about a hidden power-up when could I do that? Abito internally chuckled. Even with all the shit that happened in the world, all the experiences he encountered, at the end of the day, this was an anime world. So stupid things like power-ups do exist. But how do I use that ability again anyway? Abito asked himself. That was the main question. He remembered nothing except trying to convert fire chakra internally in his chakra coils. For all intents and purposes, that should have burned his chakra coils, yet it didn't have made him into whatever the fuck that was. Abito after escaping the ice, didn't look normal. All the clothes on his upper body were ripped off. And all the veins in his body could be seen pumping blood were visible, and his skin had taken on a red appearance. Heck, there were even some cracks on his face and body, using the gates, shouldn't make you transform like that. Whatever that form was looked like a mixed version of Luffy's second gear, and Tanjiro's Demon Slayer Mark transformation. This was just unreal, but then again he accepted the reality of this world long before. So now he just needs to find a way to tap into the new power. Hopefully soon. Even though he was two days late, all of the things with the Chidoku clan were sorted out. The survivors of the war had gone back to the new clan home located inside of the Land of Tea. And actually, due to the battle, all of the Chidoku clan members now knew about his identity. But he wasn't afraid of any one of them snitching on him or anything. In fact, due to the battle, the warrior-driven Chidoku clan members respected him even more. And were willing to listen to anything he says. For now Abito didn't do anything. The old bat had set up the new homes in a way where the Chidoku clan won't run mad, due to the influx of nature chakra. And at the same time, save it from being found out by any other shinobus. So he wasn't worried about Orochimaru finding about it. And also, there was a reason for him being late. When the bat saw Abito fell into a coma after the fight, they hurried to get Abito back to one of their bases, it just so happened that the Chidoku warriors that were present there carried him back to their new home. Abito was out only for a few hours, after that he was told all of this by Nightwing. Abito then hurried back to the land of mangroves with some of his bats. Even though the fight was won by Abito, there were evidence of the fight. And good trackers could connect the fight back to Kanoha. And possibly the mist could use it as an excuse to start the war. 
After the small battle, Abito didn't wish for his friends or any kids his age to go on the battlefield. Even Abito who was a full-grown man trapped in a child's body, couldn't cope up with the horrors of his first battle. So he went back to old Judoku's home, took out every barrier seal, and blew the whole village up with his explosion seals. He did the same with a mist camp, burning the whole place down with his fire release. Destroying any evidence and planting false ones in the process. Gagami had trained him how to plan false evidence while he was training under him. And he used every last trick in the books. Not knowing that it would make one middle-aged old man very mad. Now even if the Mr. Orochimaru came back to this place, they would find nothing but burnt remains here. And to top it all off, he planted the false evidence in a way where it would point to Iwa Shinobis attacking Mist and the Judoku clan. Abito of course didn't forget to collect the Mist Shinobi bodies, as almost all of them were from the Hazuki clan or the Yuki clan. More bloodline research material for him. He wasn't cruel enough to collect Judoku clan bodies for research, so he gave them a burial after bringing them back to the Land of Tea, their new homes. Abito would have liked to keep one or two of the Mist Shinobis alive for him to research on their abilities and gain their techniques. But probing their memories later wasn't too much of a loss either. Especially as both Daki's and Haruto's heads were intact with almost no harm to their brains. He would need to speed up learning Yamanaka Jutsus faster now. With that Abito got back to Konoha. Abito of course was exhausted but couldn't sleep cause of his nightmares. So he had to rely on his breathing technique to support himself. But even then, the mental exhaustion was getting to him. After he got back he was in for a surprise, one of the old elders of the bats called him out, a massage was left by the grand lady of the bats for him. The massage was simple. Abito Ichiha I deem you worthy of being the bat summoner of the clan. And you are to meet me in the forest of rotting trees in a week. Abito was kinda irritated with her saying that she just deemed him worthy now. He wasn't prideful or anything, but he was the prodigy of Ichiha at least show some respect. Also, what's with her telling him to meet her in the forest of rotting trees? The place wasn't that far from Kanoha. In fact, it was inside the fire country. Only a few days visit, but for him, it would take one max. Why would she want to meet him there she mostly hangs around Kashina guarding the fox seal and whatnot. Meh she's just playing the mysterious grandma card. The Ichiha internally chuckled. But does this mean, she will help in future well, I hope so she was there when Bat still had the Ryuchi cave under them, so she should have some tricks for me. Rumors are she even knows about the lost Senjutsu arts of the Bats. Even though, whether she's a sage or not, no one knows so getting her approval isn't all bad. Abito also was kinda surprised about all of this, but he was kinda excited as well. Now that he had the whole Chidoku clan under him, and had someone that knows Senjutsu, creating a curse seal from scratch shouldn't be a problem. For now, though, Abito would just train for the upcoming Chunin exams. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.